everyone, and welcome back to New Game Who Dis. Tonight, tonight is a special night. It's a special night for a lot of reasons. I'll be honest, there's some times when I'm sitting down to play, sitting down to record, and it is the last thing that I want to do, whether it's the game or my mood, or now that this is our job, sometimes I just don't want to do it. Tonight is the exact opposite, and there's a couple reasons for that. One is the game. We know the game is great. We know I love the game. We know I'm, I'm marking out for the game. The other is the scenario. I think it's the best written scenario I've ever read. But the real reason is this group, especially our special guests who, who raised the bar for our game and raised the bar for everyone around them. Give it up once again for Becca Scott and Nora Ibrahim. <laughs> Do we clap for ourselves? Yes! I was, yes. You said Becca. I was clapping for Becca. I was like, yeah, oh, you said my name too. <laughs> you clap for yourselves clapping for each and other. each other. <laughs> oh, it is such a joy. I, it, it, this we've, we've been playing this now. This is our fifth and final session. Tonight's the finale. I'm so sad. I'll never see either of you again. <laughs> no, that's not well. true. I'm sure we'll see you again. Uh, but this is this or has just been wonderful. Characters. And I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for tonight. I don't even, I'm beside myself. I, uh, I sat down to do some real good prep this morning, uh, like around 8.30. And then around 3 o'clock, I looked at my uh, wrist and and realized I'd only taken 637 steps. Uh, and I was like, I need, to, I need to put this down and go walk around. So I went on a run, and I was just thinking about this tonight, getting, getting jazzed up. And uh, we were even sitting here before we went into prep tonight. I just, I, I'm so excited to play. I'm so excited to play because I know a lot of stuff that's going to go on, but I also have no idea what's going to go on, and I have no idea how it's going to end. So I'm excited to discover it with you. I hope to ruin all your plans. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's possible. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it is. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you I, haven't really prepped anything. The only no. thing you've planned is to have fun. And Becca's going to destroy that. <laughs> right. Yeah, I You're guess welcome. you could make it so it's not fun for me. That would That's possible. <laughs> oh, Damn it, I never well, thought of that. Well. I don't want to do that. It's too late. Now I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick turn. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how have we done so far? Have we ruined your plans in the previous four episodes? No, no. I've really, I think this has like changed the way that I GM in general. Obviously, this is called Keeper for this, but uh, it, it's changed my whole outlook on gaming. Uh, you know, uh, because you've thrown me so many curveballs, and I think in the past, in my in my younger years, I would have been like, oh, no, you, you can't do that. You can't steal three cars. That's just foolish. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't planned what to do if you do that. Instead, I just, I've been yes-anding the whole way along, and it's, it's, it's allowed us to discover something really exciting in ways that I didn't th think uh, possible when I first read this adventure. So in that same vein, I'm I'm excited to go along this uh, discovery uh, again with you tonight. Uh, Becca and Nora, I'm, I'm going to miss you after this week, although Nora, I'll see you again next week. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, everyone is going to be dying to know how they can see more of you after this. Becca, you've, you've got some really exciting stuff happening as we speak. I have two. As this is airing, there is also airing something that you can watch at any time because it's on dropout.tv. Uh, it is The Seven, a season of Dimension 20, which is an actual play, D&D &D show, but it is very edited. <laughs> As a performer, I very much appreciate. <laughs> and um, it, it's probably uh, the coolest thing I've ever done in my life is getting to play Penny Luckstone in that, which is based on an NPC from their very first season of Dimension 20, Fantasy High. Um, <laughs> and uh, they're, they're quite a ragtag team. Also, we were just talking a little bit, uh, Matthew and I, in our pre-show time about how my social media has infected him with the want to play Magic the Gathering. I'm a big Magic the Gathering player. I got to guest on a, a really cool show that I've been watching forever called Game Nights, Nights with a K. And uh, I finally got to go on the show because I've been buddies with the host for a while. And the episode I was on was with Joe Manganiello. And they just announced it today. Uh, and it comes out, uh, it'll be out by the time this airs. So um, those, are, those are my two very exciting uh, things of the year that are both premiering at about the time that this is premiering. So <laughs> that, there you go. That's pretty exciting. That's going to be... Uh... <laughs> 
That's going to be tough to beat. No, I should have really tough sorry. to follow. I should have started I with news. Joe. I've been holding <laughs> it We've in just for been out from months. There. <laughs> Matthew and Joe pop in on Grant and then Becca, Dora. Uh, Nora, uh, you you always have a million things going on. Where where can we see you after tonight? I, um, because everyone wants to see you. Besides our show in Indianapolis on Saturday, right. September 18th. So I think that'll be my, my first like full on live show. Yeah. That's you awesome. guys, right? With Amazing. us. Yeah. It's the first time we'll have met you in person. I know. I know that's crazy. What if she's so two weird. dimensional? I know. She just, she's a cardboard I just turn cutout. sideways and disappear. <laughs> wait, no, where'd she go? Uh, where'd wait, she go? Ha- have you ever done uh, any any live shows in front of an audience with this nonsense? I did a very brief uh, appearance with LA by Night at WonderCon. Okay, but it was like a very brief, like in and out. Like they were doing a, an episode, and I just kind of popped in. Uh, real quick did a did a thing and then and then split so it wasn't a full-on it wasn't the full-on experience so i'm i'm excited to to do that this is um, gonna be so fun yeah uh but i'm still doing into the mist with uh realm smith on mondays that's our curse of strad campaign um still doing black dice society with becca on dnd's channel on thursdays uh, still doing damsels dice everything nice on Pixel Circus on Saturdays, um, <laughs> but we've got LA by Night is back. For Very season exciting. Five. Yes. This month, which I'm really I mean excited about. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, it's crazy. So. Oh, you heard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I yell? <laughs> um, but we will also be be performing live at Gen Con with. Uh, I'll be doing that with LA by Night as well. So this is going to be a very exciting month oh man let's uh let's all mask up and do some cartwheels through the streets of indianapolis uh, uh, some uh some glass cannon stuff also happened. yeah there is a lot of glass you we've uh, we've just kind of taken you into the fold here and trying to put you on <laughs> as much as humanly possible uh becca are you oh, going to gen con are you gonna be an indie I uh, deeply wish I could, and then also am very scared about COVID, but uh, am going to a close friend's wedding that obviously uh. doesn't know about cool gaming cons. It's embarrassing for them. How dare um, they? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> technically they, they have, have a the beautiful date first. wedding, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> spit on their beautiful wedding. I could be gaming right now. I mean, sorry, so glad I'm here. It'd be weird <laughs> if their bar? wedding favors were like D20s, and you're like, don't you realize there's a con going on? What's wrong with you people? What's wrong with you? Uh, yeah. Joe, you do have some exciting stuff going on. Uh, really exciting stuff. Tell us everything you want to talk about. It. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've set you up, do I? I, I, I don't. Oh, uh, God. It's, well, a, it's I just, a pretty mo- monumental uh, change in your life. Yeah, I just bought a house, my first ever <gasps> house. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very, very thrilling and exciting. It, <laughs> terrifying it's amazing it's amazing i i've just i've just got in here and uh it's How's really truly staggering the amount of things that are that are wrong <laughs> like it's it's, uh, it's it's unbelievable uh and you know a lot of it's small and like not really that important but it just it's like it, it's constantly surrounding you. You're like, oh, that, oh, that. Like, <laughs> and now it's all it's all on you. So yeah, this is a first for me. I I've spent spent so many years in New York just renting, you know, and like, uh. And so the other night I'm sleeping and I'm like, and so then uh, I had my first break in dream. So that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that gave me a heart attack. And then after that I was like, ah, it's just a dream. And th- this is like another night. And I'm like. Uh, I'm just laying there and I'm thinking, you know, this is like really the first time that like I have been the responsible party fully, uh, completely in a building, you know, for the safety of everyone inside of it. And I, I, I'm just laying there. I can't sleep. And I'm just thinking, man, even when I just like rented the second floor of a house and there was one family downstairs, at least there was someone else there. You know what I mean? There was like, it was always somebody else in the situation that, that, that might be able to, you know, join, uh, you know, to, to be an ally in a fight against some awful uh, robbery. And now I'm laying there and I'm like, I'm alone. It's just me. <laughs> it's just and, so, and, then I started, and then I started thinking about Troy's like excessive uh, secure home security measures, his motion sensor cameras and his uh, lights and all this stuff. And I was like, and I've been, I made so much fun of him. And now I'm like, 
He's got the right side of it. He's right. Yeah, I have to my, my spend twenty grand on this. Looks like as the main security in my house, I keep a machete under my side of the bed. Yeah, I like I smart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. The funny thing is, you guys aren't kidding, are you? No, <laughs> no. And I got a whole duffel bag full of like crazy knives. <laughs> just, like, it's just the cougar so out like his bedside. Troy, I, I went and dug arrows. out my old uh, Crosstown Jerk softball bat and literally yeah. was like, I'll just put this in my closet right here. Just, Can't just in case. I was like freaking out, man. Weird. Yeah. Me out. It, the more you're there, the more you're going to want to add to it. My backyard now looks like that scene in Entrapment with like Captain Zeta Zones is going under lasers. Uh, <laughs> Are you at all concerned, Joe, that after tonight's adventure, your home invasion nightmares are going to be more in the cosmic horror realm? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. might get to you tonight. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if a home alone paint can feather setup is going to do the trick for, for Cthulhu, yeah. Joe. Cthulhu. I don't, you have to reconsider your home. <laughs> Honestly, it system. might be better than a gun. <laughs> really? At least you'll know where the monster is. Yeah. <laughs> When it goes invisible. <laughs> <laughs> a lawyer can do that, just saying. It's a Cthulhu monster. Matthew, what do you got cooking in the old uh, land of Capitacasa? Anything fun? Anything exciting? Anything that can top these three all-stars? No. No. no nothing. I'm going to Seattle. Ah! It's crazy. My sister... My... my my sister-in-law lives out there and she was supposed to get married and then they put off the wedding for a year and then they just like secretly got married. Uh, <gasps> How dare they? But well, it wasn't that secret. I mean, we knew about it. They was like, we went to City Hall. Um, but Caitlin hasn't seen her sister in, I mean, since 2019. So oh, wow. we've gotta, we're going out there. So it's going to be, uh, and uh, her whole family is going to be out there and uh, my sister-in-law's husband's family is going to be out there. So uh, we're going to spend a lot of time outside. We're all vaccinated with masks. At least I'll be wearing a mask, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully we'll hopefully we'll all be great. <laughs> yeah, dude, flying sucks now. It, it's it's awful. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. I I had to. Do, I did it. We flew to Virginia, and I flew up to Philly to for our show up there. And uh, it was weird. It was weird and very stressful. <laughs> yeah, not fun at all. I'm flying first class in a couple of weeks. I'm not even looking forward to it. it. Used to be such an exciting time, and I'm like, ah, Ooh. it's the worst. You're first, first class, class. You first class, fancy oh. pants. Once you, you first drop class, that in there, what? you can't go back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a lot of miles. I got a lot of miles. We travel a lot. I just cash them in. What's your uh, airline? Uh oh. Do you want to say? Is this Delta. a secret? Delta all the way. Silver medallion. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I really like Delta. I mean, I love JetBlue. I, I liked Virgin back in the day, but Delta just, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And I didn't have to tackle anyone uh, on a Delta flight like I did on an American Airlines flight one time. But that's a story for another time. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's its own the, scenario. You guys yeah. don't know that story. Jeez. Yeah, you know, they toss the word hero around a lot, but I don't like to. <laughs> I don't like to use that when describing the work. scene. <laughs> I think Webster defines the word hero. Uh, no, I'll, I'll tell you after the stream. Troy uh, Lavely. It's just a picture of me. Give it a thumbs up with the American flag behind me. <laughs> <laughs> like the eagle sword. Uh, well, uh, I've, I've stalled long enough, but we, we have a couple more announcements. Uh, one, we're doing some more giveaways tonight, right, Joe? Our uh, good buddies? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Say we are doing giveaways. <laughs> Cassie was doing giveaways because they're the best. Uh, I meant to have this prepared. I don't. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Also, you just moved in. Right. You can you hear how echoey my room is too? It's like uh, there's nothing in here really. So it's all just like banging around. <laughs> yeah, anyway. It sounds perfect to invade later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> funny. You said you have no weapons, no security. No weapons. God damn he's got a baseball bat and I know he's got a. It's in the closet. Grant, just go there first. <laughs> I'm realizing we're broadcasting this information. This yeah. is bad. Tell them where like, you hide your key. Grass already <laughs> doxed your address on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just drop my address in chat there, Brennan. No, this is, um, <laughs> once again, Chaosium is giving away three copies of the Call of Cthulhu starter set. Uh, your absolutely fantastic way to get started in this awesome game. And, uh, uh, yeah, I was just, I was listening back to, uh, last week's episode and just the Becca, you're, you know, you're raving about the system and the, this, the idea of like the investigation and the, the idea that not only 
can you die, but you probably are supposed to die or will die. It's just such an awesome and interesting game. And this is a great way to just jump right in and try it uh, and makes it easy for you and your friends. So, uh, yeah, uh, Brennan will drop a link in chat. Check our chat. Click on that link. It'll take you to the place where you can enter the giveaway and we'll pull it by the end of the evening here and uh, we'll announce the winner in chat. So just pay attention there around when we get towards the end. Uh, and yeah, we'll give away uh, three of these. Oh, by the way, you can only get the hard copy if you're uh, domestic um, US, but if you're international, still enter because if you get pulled, we'll send you a, a digital copy. So you're all good. And if you don't win, just go buy it. This game is 1,000% worth playing. I, uh, I've been going back through the Keeper Guide. It's just such a gorgeous book and a, an elegant, beautiful system. And uh, we're so happy with Chaosium. Uh, next week's new game, Who Dis? In case you don't know, we're going to be playing RuneQuest, uh, the first game that Chaosium ever put out. Uh, I'm going to be uh, running the game. Nora's going to be back! And Maddie's hey. Caps is going to be back! And then uh, a couple of first time to the network, Tanya DePass and Connie Chang. This is an amazing group. Uh, my brain is just like swimming with RuneQuest rules, Cthulhu rules, Pathfinder rules, Starfinder rules. I just, I need a, need a little break. Uh, but I'm excited for I'm excited for tonight. I'm excited to dive in and wrap this story up because since we started playing, it's tonight's episode that I was the most excited about. Because while I don't know what you're going to do, I know where you got to go. Uh, this has been the most fun I've had gaming since I got back into this around 10 years ago. And you have done a ton in just over 10 hours of play, 10, 11 hours of play. I'm going to go over a little recap here because a lot has happened. The basics are the year is 1932. It's the height of the Great Depression. Your characters are some of many who have suffered the most and lost everything. And you live in little Hooverville, a little shanty town, just on the outskirts of Crawley, Massachusetts. Life is horrible there. There's this sickness, this wasting disease going around camp that just claimed the life of Leo's former dance partner, partner Albertine Ricks. And at the start of the story, two children just went missing overnight. Maybe it's these faceless men that some people claim to see coming into camp at night with their ventriloquist dummy. Maybe they have something to do with the disappearances. You don't know. But the four of you do find tire tracks outside of camp that lead in the direction of a bar that Peachy used to work at. I've mentioned Leo, I've mentioned Peachy. Let's let's talk about your characters, reintroduce them again. Leo, uh, what's your story? Uh, Leo Victoria was a, uh, a, a pretty uh, consistently working Broadway dancer. Uh, Albertine was his dance partner. They appeared in a touring production of No No Nanette right before the depression shut everything down. Um, he's very tall, lanky, and he's uh, he's got excellent turnout. <laughs> what about old Penelope Peachy Keen? Well, Penelope was uh, in in one at one time, you know, before things all went sour to everybody in the in the country. She was once a very glamorous dame, with, <laughs> with <laughs> once very glamorous, with with dreams of stardom. However, as a child. She had her she had her one chance taken away from her because that bitch Rita Hayworth beat her out <laughs> in the audition. <laughs> and she will never let it go. <laughs> and so now, you know, in, in in her time she is working as a bartender, whatever, but she could have been a star. She could have been my name in lights. Penelope <laughs> Keen. <laughs> on the silver screen. Robbed. I'm not bitter robbed. about it one bit. I was robbed. You really were. What about <laughs> Preston Tippett? Preston Tippett. God, I love this poor bastard. <laughs> He's not very tall. Uh, at 5'9". He wears a threadbare suit. He looks like he's fallen on hard times. A ratty hat. Uh, bad shoes. Barely toes are practically coming out of him and he's so wafer thin and you can tell his suit is like two or three sizes too large his belt is like 
going he has like use a knife to put notches deeper into the belt to like keep the pants up uh he got ruined uh during the depression he used to be a journalist for the red sox he was a beat uh, reporter uh for the red sox and he, he covered them and he loved going to fenway he loved watching the games loved being around the players um i have here on my character sheet that one of the significant people in his life is goose goslin a st louis cardinals outfielder <laughs> He, Preston seeks revenge. Here's my notes from that first session. He seeks revenge against Goose Goslin for Preston's financial ruin. Also, Goose Goslin is a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you want to go that story again, go back to episode one of this because that, that guy is an a hole. Uh, and so, yeah, he covered the team for years and then he lost his job. And now he picked up along the way a pet dog uh, that he named Dizzy, who's uh, also fallen on rough times and he's trying to nurse him back to health. Uh, he's, he's got one eye and he, he needs help. And so uh, Preston has sort of taken him under his wing. Start a quick poll in the chat. Will Dizzy survive this episode? Oh, God. Oh. I notoriously murder animal companions. Wait a minute. I wasn't it's, warned of this. It's out of my hands. Trigger, it's trigger my warning. Hands. <laughs> trigger warning. The fictitious dog may die. Uh, let's talk about old <laughs> Shirley Cisco, the muscle of this group. Oh, you want to know about Shirley, do you? <laughs> Shirley was a boxer. She was going to be a star, with the, along with her fist, Lucy and Ethel. She was going straight to the top, training every day at Benny's Gymnasium. But of course, she was ruined like everybody else. And the real thing that brought her down most of all was Ned, her ex-husband. That son of a bitch. But really, if he'd take me back, I, 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 I'd take him to... Ned, I, I miss you, baby. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> Are you watching the stream? Ned? Ned Are you the watching chat? the stream? Are you on Twitch, baby? Ned, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know my own strength. <laughs> She's got the body of a refrigerator. <laughs> she makes it work. Short, spiky blonde hair. And, uh, you know, she, she did some time uh, before the Depression and after working in cafeterias and now so much, not so much working as, you know, helping to prep the food. And she usually uh, is wielding a, um, a ladle of sorts. It's a weapon of choice lately. Yes, Lucy, Ethel, and a ladle. A dangerous... I call him Ricky. <laughs> Ricky. Ricky the ladle. <laughs> it's a triple threat. So the four of you, down on your luck depressed sick like everyone else in your camp but maybe the most able-bodied follow these tracks follow them in the direction of the bar and restaurant that peachy used to work at the proprietor ira brody tells you that she saw a car drive past late last night and she recognized it it's a fancy car cadillac 16 madam x and there's only one guy in town that drives a car that nice a man by the name of roscoe malloy so you follow up on roscoe at the Grand Crawley Hotel, and you find out he's skipped town, heading down to the Cape for a business opportunity. So then you go to the hospital to see if anyone else in town is suffering from this strange disease. And after breaking into the morgue at night, you find that a former reporter named Harold Priestley seems to have perished from it, and records indicate that his wife died of it as well. When you get back to camp, you find out that during Albertine's autopsy, the camp doctor found small leathery sacks in her abdomen that when he discovered them, they burst. Something jumped out and got into the doctor, most likely, because now he's sick as well. So finally, the next day, you go to the cops to report the missing children. And after some prodding, the desk sergeant tells you, He's not allowed to help anyone from the Hooverville upon strict orders of the chief of police who seems to be in the back pocket of a socialite named Theodore Sedgwick. This veteran who has a disfigured face that he covers up who has apparently done pretty well for himself since he left the war. You go to the library and a search of records on Sedgwick doesn't show any military service, but it does show that he was an assistant to a professor at Miskatonic University named Ashton Hawks, a physics 
professor who disappeared mysteriously six years ago. You decide he's got to be tied up in this. Let's go confront him. So you go to Cedric's apartment building, sneak in, and murder his butler in panic. He could still be alive. Nice. No, he's, he's dead, man. <laughs> he's, he's, that was a big puddle of blood, buddy. That was yeah. a lot of blood. I didn't he hit hasn't him had a pulse for two that and a half hours. That wasn't Shirley's soup. <laughs> As I listened back, I forgot Shirley was like, let's just throw him out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> distract the cop. Is it too late to make him into soup? <laughs> People but you are did. Hungry. Times is hard. Times is hard. You did eat uh, all of the food in Cedric's frizz, fridge. Um, so after murdering the butler, you look through some documents in Cedric's apartment and find that he's part of a group known as the Midas Circle, which includes Roscoe Malloy, a man named Casper Brink, and some hired muscle named Alex Rossetti. He also appears to have had a relationship with the now deceased. Albertine Ricks. So last time you narrowly escape the murder scene before the cops catch on and you head over to the Crawley Examiner to see how the Priestleys were tied up in all of this. The editor in, in chief there is dodgy of your questions and you realize he's already been compromised, possibly by Sedgwick and this Midas Circle as well. So you wait until nightfall and you break into the examiner's morgue to look through old records. You find a bunch of research and unpublished articles by Harold Priestley where it appears he was working on this big story, this big expose on the Midas Circle. The stories are all revolving around how there's this group of men that seem to succeed wildly at a time when everyone else was falling apart. The rich get rich. As the saying goes, perhaps it was this expose that led to Priestley's death, maybe his wife's death. You find Casper Brink's address, an estate outside of town called Greenlee. So you head there in the middle of the night, break in and find Casper Brink sitting alone, drunk in his bedroom with a revolver. He's not in his right mind. He talks about how Sedgwick came to him a while back with a proposal, how he submitted to Sedgwick's experiments where he was put to sleep, and then he would uh, awake with this feeling of great power, and he used this power to make himself rich. Every business decision he made seemed to just make him further and further successful, so he kept submitting himself to Sedgwick's experiments, but eventually Sedgwick wanted to do stuff to other people, to take from other people, other people like the people in your Hooverville and then he wanted to take children when Brink didn't want to go down that line anymore he thinks that Sedgwick turned on him and put something inside of him he feels it crawling under his skin as you kind of lay down the law for Brink he puts the gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger and kills himself at this point, you have one other lead you find the name while searching through Brink's documents Reggie Clover you ask around camp, does anyone know anyone named Reggie Clover? And one guy is like, I think, I think he's the guy that works at the fruit stand. He sweeps out in front. So you go there, and sure enough, there's a guy standing there sweeping outside the store. He seems to be a little touched in the head. But as you talk to him, you find out that he used to be a physics student at Miskatonic University. A physics student under Dr. Ashton Hawks. He tells you in his confused state that Hawks had a machine and, 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 and that machine, Clover says, was a gateway to another world. And one day that machine ate him up. <laughs> and then Hawks' assistant, Teddy, took over. And Teddy brought Reggie out into the country, activated the machine, took things from another world and put them into Reggie. And that's why he's touched. You ask him, where did this all take place? And as he's being uh, pulled away and they're threatening to call the cops on you because you guys got him so upset, he yells out, prospect. Meanwhile, back at camp, Shirley's ex-husband, Ned, brings an unconscious Billy Spitzer, one of the missing kids, back into the camp. His hands are all covered in bloody bandages. The child is unconscious. Billy comes to and whispers that they have her, her meaning the other missing child, Esther Friend, and they have her at Prospect. 
You know that Prospect is another one of these estates, like Greenlee's, out in, uh, as I said last week, Lovecraft Country, the opposite way of town, where it's just large estates, where weird stuff goes on and no one asks any questions. So I imagine you make your way back into camp. Maybe you steal another car. Maybe you hitch a ride. But either way, at a certain point, you're walking towards the lights of camp. And from there, we just see 10 years ago. And lights come up on the exterior of the Blue Star Diner and restaurant. It's nighttime. We cut to inside and there's a dozen or so patrons nursing small glasses of brown liquor, several empty glasses surrounding them. At some of the booths, there are some couples engaged in conversation while eating. Ira Brody, the owner, steps out of the back room with her coat and hat in her hand. She turns to the bar and we see a much younger and much healthier looking Penelope Peachy Keen tending the bar. Iris says, uh, you sure you don't mind uh, closing up tonight? Yeah, of course, no problem. I, I don't think you'll get many more customers. You can lock up once those couples are done. These bums will drink until you tell them to leave anyway. I, I feel so bad leaving you, but I haven't seen my kids in a few days. I just thought maybe I could go home. Ira, Ira get out of here, I got it. Okay, okay, Ira nods and walks out. We see her get into her car and drive off. Time passes and we see the last couple pay their bill, thank Peachy with a nice hefty tip and exit the bar. Peachy turns to the last remaining drunk who's teetering on his chair. All right, Bobby, last call, let's wrap this up. <laughs> Just then a bell rings, the sound of the front door opening. Peachy turns to see four men enter. Three of them are dressed in suits, but they look Sketchy. The other one looks very apprehensive, like he's with them against their will. Uh, fellas, we're actually closing up. Uh, I already just did a last call. Two of the guys ignore her completely, grab the scared by the, by, by the arm and just drag him uh, towards a table in the back of the restaurant. And they nod to the other guy who walks towards you, Peachy. It's like, well, if you did last call, we still have time for a round then, right? You hear a sound like a punch, Peachy, and you look over and you see the two men pummeling the frightened guy. It looks like one guy punched him in the stomach and when he keeled over, the other guy kneed him in the face. He's hit the floor and they're just stomping on him. Hey, hey, you can't do that in here. Take it outside. The man who came up to the bar steps between you, Peachy, and the sight of this beatdown and just gives you a look. He's like, hey, 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 sweetheart, you have a customer, me. Don't be rude. And he pulls his coat back to reveal a revolver sticking out of his pants. Maybe Peachy hesitates as the sound of this beatdown continues. He's like, yeah, that's right. How about you give me a nice glass of whiskey? Peachy turns to the bar and leans down to grab a glass. As she goes to grab the glass, her hand goes to a shotgun she has hidden underneath the bar. At that moment, a gunshot goes off and she looks over to see that one of the men wearing suits has shot the guy on the ground that they've been pummeling. Realizing she's outnumbered, she releases her hand from the shotgun. The two men start walking towards the door and one of them calls out, Hey, Rosetti, let's go. <gasps> Rosetti, you son of a bitch. The man you've been talking to, this Rosetti, looks at you. Uh, on second thought, I guess I'm not thirsty no more. Here, buy yourself a nice mix, scarf. He undoes a money clip, throws some wads of cash onto the bar, pats the drunk on his back, who's been oblivious to this whole scene, and he walks out. Peachy waits a moment until they've driven off, instinctively grabs the cash, rushes around to the corner to this body that lies on the ground. She approaches slowly and looks down at the face with a huge hole where the eye used to be, now just gushing blood. She turns away and looks back to the bar, her hands still clutching the wad of bills. And on the wall behind her, behind the bar, she stares at photos of Greta Garbo. 
Clara Bow, Joan Crawford, and other female starlets from the 1920s. In time, Rita Hayworth's picture will grace this wall, and the walls of many other taverns and speakeasies as well. And at that moment, P.G. knows her photo never will. And we come back to the shanty town, back to the Hooverville, as the four of you roll in, realizing that all roads lead to Prospect. What do you do? You say roll in, so I can. Assume, I can't remember for sure, but we still have a car, right? We st- the one one of the car one of the cars we stole along the way is still in our possession. Uh, right now, you, I would I would just have a hand wave that you stole another car because when you uh, when you broke into Sedgwick's place and the cops came up and you dressed as the butler talked your way out of it, the cop came down and a tow truck came and took the car, and then you walked from the affluent neighborhood back to the Crawley Examiner. I'm happy to say you then stole another car. It's, it's basically your M.O. at this point. Uh, so you could very easily drive in, in a, uh, another stolen vehicle. It's what we do. We've proven we're good at it. <laughs> one trick pony, but it's a pretty good pony. <laughs> that is a one good pony. Deserves a brush. <sighs> Friends, can we talk about what we've seen? I mean, I've never seen a man just bleeding out from a gun wound in front of me like that as the life slips out of him. I mean, there was one gal who, uh, you know, died, gave a punch to and um, well, things went poorly, but I, I don't know. That was a first for me. Yeah, yeah, me, me, me too, Cheryl. I, I ain't never seen anything like that and I... I don't know. I, I mean, I... I've seen a lot of terrible things in the last few years, that's for sure, but nothing like that. I don't know what these these Midas people are up to, but talking about going to other worlds, what? Doesn't make any sense. What's Reggie talking about? Was it Reggie? Reginald? What's his name? Reggie Reggie Clover. Reggie Reggie Clover. What's Reggie talking about? I mean, it can't be another world, right? So what's he really saying? What did he see? You could tell something's not right with the guy. Seems he like must that four-leaf clover's all out of luck. <laughs> You've been sitting on that all week? Nope. Okay. No. Be honest. Be honest. Like, you wrote it five sense. days ago. Be Here honest. it comes. <laughs> Here it comes. I can't stop it. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I've, you know, I don't. I uh, uh, go into games like this. I haven't played a lot of Call of Cthulhu, but I assume the play, the character's are always completely baffled and blindsided by the supernatural uh, utterly right like they're not like it's not like kind of known that these monsters exist right in this like uh alternate reality i wonder i think about that i mean i we've also seen some pretty terrible things in the past few days i mean i just watched my old dance partner waste away into dust and then find out there were sacks of things inside of her that are now inside of a doctor who's not allowed to treat her like it's like the between the conspiracy and the horrific things that are happened i just yeah i mean yeah but to me all of that can be explained away by disease and conspiracy right conspiracy of rich people which is not surprising to anybody it crosses the line to me once you even like uh sedgwick his scheme the scheme is like you know, oh, it's a get-rich-quick scheme, whatever it is. You can explain it away in your head. You can place it on something that isn't supernatural. But as soon as Reggie starts talking about a doorway to another world that he sucked into, it's like, there's no explaining that as something mundane. You know, like, that is... That's true. That's I think where, this is something everyone yeah. can choose about their own character. Yeah. How yeah, yeah. you react when confronted with the otherworldly. Yeah. I mean, is it this- gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, I feel like for Preston, Preston is like, it, this just sounds like fantasy. Right. Until he's, in facts, fiz- Bub. Until he's in confronted facts. physically with the other world, it, that's what Pres- Preston's like seeing is believing. Whereas other people, maybe they've already seen things or they have their own uh, feelings about it. Yeah. I mean, Preston, I... look at me. Look at me. Look at Shirley in the eyes. Yeah. There is nothing in this world that you can't punch back into line, and I firmly believe that. 
right. Okay, but this is really weird, though. It's not like... This isn't like a case of the rickets. This is now where people have... <laughs> people are turned into dust. Sax's stuff is flying out into doctors and... and it's none of it makes sense. None of it. Even I, I know I know I didn't get no education, but I know that none of this sounds right. You're I right, think that Peachy. this is Yeah. And uh, Leo pulls out the revolver with the single round he got from his old stage manager and he goes, But I do know one thing. This Sedgwick character, this bullet is for him. Leo, is that a prop gun from one of your stage plays? Don't make fun of me, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I can't. This Wait, image, really? That's a you're holding a gun. It it, it, it's, it's comical. I'm not going to lie. I killed a man, Shirley. You're not the only one. <laughs> right, but that was an accident. Was <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> look, that was look, also look, look, an all right. accident. All right. Everyone calm down. Look, you're all right. Everybody's right. We got to we gotta put our heads together here, whether, whether it is some... Some other world, or whether it's uh, easy to explain, we gotta find out. Because here's the thing, we could either walk away and just say, you know, I don't want no part of this, but look, at the end of the day, Esther's out there, and no one else is gonna help her, right? The cops aren't gonna help her, they don't give a shit. It's gonna come down to us. And and, and if we don't move fast, something could happen to that little girl, and, and maybe she's still okay. Maybe there's a chance we could we could save her. Uh, so I, I say we just go. I say we just go as soon as we can. I think we should, because if they they came after her, they're coming after everybody in the Hooverville, they're going to be coming after us. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be us, us anyway. That's right. Maybe That's we right. can find, uh, you know, maybe some nice food to bring back to little Billy. I mean, he made it out from wherever they had him, but uh, we don't know that he's going to make it. I know. But maybe there's an answer there, right? Maybe uh, this guy's got an antidote or something in the lab. Retori, I don't know. Maybe he's got something there that we could find that could help the kid. And then yeah, this ain't gonna be fixed with leeches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember that Ned told you. I believe he told you. If he didn't, it'll be off screen because uh, you've seen the scene play out. That he reached his hands directly in to Billy's abdomen. Billy pulled his hands straight through, permeated the skin, and he pulled out this like creature that cut his hands to shreds and then the thing got away all right you see think about what ned said you can punch anything this monster it's, it's putting creatures in people we could stomp on them you know we just need to get to them can i roll an occult to see a does leo have any kind of understanding about this other world idea and then b maybe this hearing the story about billy if he recognizes yeah Listen, leo isn't just a dancer. He's also seen, he's been exposed to a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roll a uh, roll a we'll see. Uh, twenty nine under thirty five. Okay, so a regular success. Um, you know, I don't know what your extensive knowledge of occult is. If you just read a lot of pulp uh, fiction, or if you uh, have have dabbled in some crazy meetings, but as Reggie was talking, it didn't sound crazy to you. There's always been talk in these circles of other dimensions existing and other people trying to tap into those dimensions. You've heard about rich people who, like, that's what they do. Listen. They try to gain power from what they've, they've, they've done all they can on Earth, so now they try to gain power from other uh, universes. And seeing Albertine, seeing what happened to her, you know there was no earthly thing that could have done that to her. And Leo, I mean, he looks completely different. Even even than you know, five days ago when we were all hungry and starving and extremely down on our luck, now he looks hardened and like he doesn't have a lot to live for anymore. He's like me and Albertine. We saw things, you know. They bring us to these rich people's houses, and you see things down in their basement and this other world stuff. Everyone's trying to tap into it, you know. I believe it. And I believe that there's a chance that if we go there for Ethel, we may not come back. Well, I know he looks harder than he used to, but with that turnout, it's hard to take him seriously. I was born this way. 
my mother. She put me in dance classes right away when she, when she saw it. <laughs> Woman comes over to you, uh, Shirley, and it's like, uh, Ned, Ned's been asking for you. He's, he's not doing too well. His, his hands are all, all messed up, but he, he doesn't seem right. He looks real sick, Cheryl. Sick like Dr. Coombs. Maybe sick like Albertine. And he asked for me? Yeah, yeah, he's, he was, he's just laying there and he, he was looking for you. I, I, I said you'd be back. I, was that all right to say? I didn't know. I mean, uh, you should have told him you didn't know if I even cared anymore. Unless he, but he does care, it looks like. It looks like he cares about He's, he's asking sure? for you, yeah. Are you sure? I should probably go see him. Right, guys? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. You know, dying wish and all that. Doris, thank you. You nod to Doris. And you walk past, and as you do, Dizzy, Preston's dog, just... Hey, hey. Growls at you. At me? Yeah. Dizzy? Dizzy. What's, what's wrong with Dizzy? Dizzy. Hey, Dizzy. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Hey, you know me. Sm- sm- did my hand smell different? It kind of snaps he at did you, it to Preston, me. a little bit. Yeah, he did it to me earlier. I don't know. He might smell something on us. We might have picked something up already. Look, go talk to Ned, and then we got to figure out what to do here. Okay. But that... Kid, that's that's frightening. I mean, why wouldn't Dizzy recognize us? I think he does. I think I think he's smelling. I think he's smelling the disease. That's what I think. I think we got it already. Look, I wasn't going to say anything. I didn't want to bring anybody down, but he growled at me earlier, and I... I don't know. It's all speculation at this point. But I think we got it, whatever it is. And I think the only way that we can find a cure for it is to get to that prospect place. I want to believe that, Preston. I really do. She turns and walks towards Ned. I know. Me neither, Peachy. I don't feel different at all. But Dizzy, he's smart. He's a smart dog. You know him. Well, how do you know Dizzy's not sick with that thing? I never thought of that. I never thought of that. I'd rather get it than have Dizzy have it, I'll tell you that much. Puts his head down. Shirley walks towards the tent. All of you think about Reggie Clover's words. Teddy, he's got a way about making you forget. But I didn't forget. And you think, did they come get me? Did they put it in me? And I just don't remember. Yeah, does the does the puppet show? Does it make you forget forever? <laughs> Shirley opens up the flap to the tent. You see Ned laying there on a bunch of dirty rags. His hands are, are all wrapped up, but the blood has soaked them through completely crusty bandages. And uh he doesn't look like what Albertine looked like when Leo went in there, but he's very, very clearly dehydrated. He looks, he looks very sick. And he's like, Cheryl, Cheryl, is that you? Hey, knucklehead, it's me. <laughs> Cheryl, I'm sorry. I, I didn't, I didn't know this is where you were living. I, this ain't no place to live. Ned. No, I'm the one that should apologize. My heart's been broken ever since I was away. You know I care about you, Ned, right? I I know you do, Cheryl. (coughs) There's things more important than where I've been living right now, okay? Yeah. We gotta get you healthy. We gotta get whatever's in all these people. We gotta get it out of them. And I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm gonna do it for you, knucklehead. Yeah, I don't feel too good, Cheryl. It's got me thinking about a lot of things, thinking about us. Whatever happened to you and me, Cheryl? I, uh, I clocked you one and then you kicked me out. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I... I done bad things too. People change. I don't know. Maybe when this is all over, we can... I don't know. <laughs> he coughs, a little blood comes out of his mouth. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. You're going to have to work for it. I mean, you know I'm not a cheap date. <laughs> right, knucklehead? And she dabs at the blood on his lip with her handkerchief. And he just kind of fades out. Still a breathing, but just falls asleep. I'll come back for you, Nettie, okay? I'll come back for you. Esther she, like, tries to mm-hmm. take the little rag that's covering him and pull it up, keep him warm, and tucks it in around him. Pulls it up to his neck while you're Pitches in there. his hair. Esther Friend, Maureen, uh, mother, Maureen Friend, Esther Friend's mother, comes out to the three of you out there, and she's like, so so it sounds like they, 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 they have Esther at this place, uh, are, are you gonna? Are you gonna go? Uh, what are you gonna do, Leo? Show her the gun. Leo shows her the gun. Oh, I'm just asking questions. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna find out what how, what they did to us, and we're gonna bring Esther back. If it's if it's the last thing we can do. Please, I don't know what those monsters did to my baby girl, but bring her home safe. Don't you worry, we're going to do everything we can to bring it back. Promise. She nods and turns, muttering to herself. Time to go to Prospect? (laughs) Time to go to Prospect! (laughs) Overhead shot of the car along a long, dark road. No street lights. (sighs) Just fifth car. Fifth stolen we car. steal some from someone <laughs> in the camp, even though we have three parked cars there. Hey, hey, uh, Maureen comes running out. That's my car. <laughs> we'll bring it back. That's my car. <laughs> That's my, my car. car. So yeah, we just see this going along this dark, thin road. It's just like middle of nowhere. There's woods and then occasionally a long fence that surrounds a massive estate and then more just woods, nothingness, darkness. You look out, you can barely make out the tops of trees where the sky ends and the trees begin. And after a couple hours in the middle of the night, you pull up. And you see that gate that says Prospect. There's an enormous property peeking out from behind a a 10 foot or so tall stone wall and this large iron gate that looks to surround the grounds as far as you can see. The iron grates are rusted, um, but there's a new chain and padlock on them. See that rusted wrought iron sign, Prospect, as you walk up. And beyond the gate, you see a gravel path that runs all the way up to the main building, which is pretty far out, and it's thick with weeds. However, it looks like the largest of the weeds have been cut back enough to allow motor vehicles to drive up to the house. In fact, you can see tire tracks just beyond the gate in the leaf mulch lining the path. What do you want to do? Looks All like right, Leo, you've got a gun, so I guess we should take our orders from you? We got another gun. Who has the second gun? I got another gun. Yeah. You turn okay. around and Preston just has a gun pointed to the side of your temple. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I'll, okay. <laughs> I'm not the one around here counting guns, Leo. Uh, <laughs> nah, uh, Preston has one too. <laughs> you have the you have the. Uh, Shirley just gun. puts her her uh, the the handle yes. side of her ladle into Preston's back and says, "Oh, we're showing guns now." All right, all right. <laughs> he drops the gun, feeling and the ladle. Draws his and points into Preston. <laughs> the gun goes off. <laughs> it hits the padlock and it opens. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you have the gun from the butler, right? I have Joe? the gun from yeah, the butler. Preston yeah. took the gun from the butler, which has three bullets in it, I believe. 
Yes, that is correct. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I don't know how to get through a padlock. I don't uh, know how to pick a lock. Oh, uh, what about that ladle, Cheryl? Do you think you could just wedge it in there like a crowbar and just bam? Uh, absolutely I can. <laughs> this is what I was born to do. <laughs> God, her ceaseless confidence is just, it's so inspiring. <laughs> That's why she would have been great. She would have been. She will be. She will I be. Told her, I'm going to write about her someday in my paper when I get All one. Right. All right, so you want to just smash at the lock? I want to smash. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I want to smash. Sure, I'll smash. Can I have a smash, please? <laughs> All right, roll a, uh, a strength check. All right. You sure you don't want fighting brawl? Because I'm even better at that than being strong. Uh, yeah, sure. That, you don't like the way that lock looked at you. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to close my eyes and picture that last guy I fought at Benny's. The one, the one that held me down and I couldn't get out of the headlock. But this time I did, and I rolled a critical success. Zero, zero, one, baby! Whoa! Whoa. So you just, boom, hit it Big just in the perfect start. spot, and it, it's as if you had the key. <laughs> Unlocks. <laughs> Flips in the air and lands in your hand. Uh, did you all see that? I mean, did it, yeah, did you see? Masterful. Masterful. He's writing it down. Cheryl don't know her own strength. You That's should right. be great. You should be great, Cheryl. You should be great. I am great. You are. Great. I throw the lock over my shoulder. Let's go. It breaks a window. <laughs> <laughs> of our she new breaks car. the window. Maureen's car. <laughs> uh, there's got to be 30 acres of grounds spread out behind this gate and stone wall. You see a large summer house at the end of the main path. There's a small lake in the distance, a number of collapsed greenhouses that look inaccessible. And then there's three small outbuildings near the main house itself, an orchard to the west, and pretty much everything is in the process of being reclaimed by nature. See this path before you, which you could drive the car if you wanted to, or you could walk. Seems like someone has driven here recently. There are tracks. Let's drive real slow and quiet. Yeah, that way if we need to make a getaway, we can do it. Okay. So you hop back into the car with the now broken window. <laughs> oh, if the lock came in through the window, I'm going to pick it up. Because with that critical success, maybe I can lock something again with this later. It's true. Oh, yeah, that, that lock's in good condition. <laughs> so you hop in the car and you open the gate so that you can drive up this path. The lawns are completely wild and overgrown. Weeds and saplings tall enough to obscure most of your vision when you look to the left and the right of the path. Uh, the approach of winter is thinning them out a little bit, but it's still very unsettling because you see large things like the main house up ahead. You see the sm three small outbuildings to the left of it, but you can't see the details of things like right outside the window to either side of you. So it's a very claustrophobic feeling. Mm -hmm. From time to time, you'll hear something squish against the glass and you look and there's nothing there. So that maybe, maybe as we're driving in, uh, maybe we don't have the headlights on. Because yeah. if anybody is there, just so that uh, they don't see us coming. You click yeah. the headlights off and you are plunged into complete darkness. And so you're just driving slow, barely can see in front of you. And then at a certain point, you stop quick because there's another car. What? We steal it. <laughs> <laughs> what, and continue what driving of... slowly. Just driving. The road. Change cars. <laughs> Get in the next Is car. It... Driving, driving through this blackness. You can't see anything. And then all of a sudden there's a car and you slam on the brakes because you don't want to smash into it. Who's driving? Is it that same black car that we were looking for earlier? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's hard Is to it? see from inside the car. You want to get out and take a peek? 
All right, yeah, yeah Preston, I'll, I'll get out of the car. I get out Shotgun. without saying a word. Yeah, he'll take his revolver out too, yeah. He'll walk slowly up to the car. Okay. Look at the license plate in the back first. Can he see it from the moonlight? A little bit. Look, look there's, a, there's a three and a J, maybe an H, or is that an eight? You can't tell. Everywhere around you, the sound of rustling leaves can be heard like little creatures rushing about furtively. And the minute you get out of the car, there are these strange smells enveloping you, some sweet and almost appetizing, others astringent or nauseating, and almost none of them recognizable. And you walk up to the car, and you see that it's a black Cadillac 16, Madam X. It's Roscoe Malloy's car. I think How close that we, are gave we? A, we gave a hand signal, so we split up and flanked either side of the car. Yeah. Right. How, how far are we from the residence? Is it still not in sight? About 25 yards. Oh, okay. But it's just parked in the driveway about 25 yards away, this Roscoe mm-hmm. Malay's car. You drove a little bit. Lights are off, engine not running. Lights are off, engine not running. I will, Do we see anything through the windows? We'll walk up looking through the windows. Peachy and Leo on one side, Shirley and Preston on the other. You walk up and you look in. You don't see anything or anyone. There's a suitcase maybe in the back. Uh, some boxes. But that's it. Quietly open the door. Yeah. And check out the suitcase. I thought he was going to the gate. Hey, everybody else had a gun. If you find a gun in there, I'll take it. All right. You open it up. Ding, 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 ding. The keys are still in the ignition. Ooh. Take the keys. Take the keys. You open up the suitcase and it's closed. Looks like they were haphazardly thrown in there, not folded. Any sports coats? There's a sports coat, yeah. Like an extra large? Yeah, it's for a, a big man. Hey, give me that sports coat. Leo passes it out. Shirley tries it on. Fits perfectly. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else want to... A nice, nice cravat here. I don't know if he's a cravat man, but maybe there is. Everybody roll a spot hidden. Ooh. All right. Oh! <gasps> Oh, wait, no. A zero on one, but never mind. Still good, though. Still good. Yeah, don't forget I your hard excesses, successes, zeroed. and your extreme successes. Because they I were all zeros, and luck. then I remember it was ten. Uh, if somebody else got it, I won't spend the luck. Yeah, Leo didn't. Oof. 86 over 65. 58 over 40. And you got a ten there, Peachy. Is that a hard success or extreme? Yeah. Extreme, yeah. Oh, extreme success. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, amazing. You see two things. You, uh, while searching the car, you do find a revolver in the <gasps> glove compartment. Ooh. Amazing. The revolver like- has six bullets. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. Six whole bullets? Wait, no, someone trade with me. I, I really <laughs> yeah, am here, bad take with my, my fist. <laughs> I got... <laughs> Oh wait, uh, Leo, you have one bullet, right? I have one bullet, but my firearms isn't great. Like I've got these really compatible? high firearms. So who if, I'll <laughs> take that one if somebody wants to like switch with a shotgun or if they have a really high firearms, I'll I'll give you the revolver. A shotgun's yeah. almost like giving somebody a sidekick straight in the face. I'll trade you. <laughs> so I look over at Shirley <laughs> and I say, You got Lucy and Ethel. And then you got a, um, what was it? Uh, Ricky. Ricky. He is your friend. And I hand her. <laughs> and I, I hand her my shotgun uh, as I pick up this revolver. I feel like yeah, I should Peachy. just give, we should just give all of our guns to Peachy. <laughs> <laughs> a tear comes into Shirley's eye as Peachy says this. You get me. You're a true friend. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shirley seems like a shotgun wielder. This is this is appropriate. She, she yeah. really uh, does. The other thing you spot, uh, uh, you reach across uh, the driver's side to pop open the glove compartment, and uh, you wouldn't have seen it if you didn't really look, because it was kind of hidden underneath some paperwork. You pull the gun out, but then you see something on the other side of the window, and it looks like a desiccated deer corpse, like half sticking out of the brush. And it almost looks like it's been partially dissolved by the rain, maybe the dew. It, 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 it looks unlike any corpse you've ever seen. Even you've the seen, ones that look weird from the disease? Yeah, it looks like it would crumble to powder if you touched it. And it's just half sticking out of the brush. I don't like the looks of this. I just want to poke it with a stick <laughs> just to see what happens. You poke the deer with a stick and it goes immediately through and the portion where you poked it just crumbles into powder and you see like uh, dust come up into the air just <laughs> like you were pushing into a pile of snow. Jeez, you guys. What do you think could have done this? Is this the same thing? Is this... Maybe. This is it's... monster scientists with their weird experiments, thinking that they're God out there. Yeah. We're going to teach like them a lesson. The one that Reggie was talking about? Maybe. I can smell it. Can you smell it on the air? It's something foul. It might be killing all the animals out here. Oh, gee. I thought that was just Leo. Yeah. Oh. The astringent part really reminded me of Leo. You turn around and Leo is urinating into Roscoe Malloy's suitcase. <laughs> Just, I hate him. He's done terrible things to us. No, we get it. You don't have to explain yourself. There'll be plenty of time to pee in lots of things when we're done. I don't think now's the time for that, Leo. Sorry, sorry. It's very try, 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 it's trying time to me. I, I know, I know. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Like, it did feel good, though. I recommend it. All of you are armed now. The house lies before you. The outbuildings. Pathway about 20 yards away. Do you all have your weapons out? Or are you... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't know what kind of trouble you're gonna get into. You see Malloy's car, and you don't see Malloy. <laughs> so you continue approaching the house. Makes me nervous that the muscle left behind his gun, almost as if a gun will uh, ultimately not be very useful in He's facing not the whatever muscle. we're going to face. He's not the muscle. Oh, Rossetti is the muscle. That's, right. that's Rossetti. Rossetti. But this well, guy was the, I don't know. He was the dirtbag that uh, beat out old Tommy Dolan, right? Is that his name? Right, Tommy, right, right, Tommy right, right. He sure wasn't the brains of the operation if he left the gun in the car. Yeah, or maybe he trusted somebody. Trusted him too maybe much. He was, maybe he was the face. Ooh. Maybe he trusted his padlock a little too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no match for Shirley Cisco. All right, we'll approach the residence. I direct oh. you all to roll 20. Oh, gosh. Uh oh. Great Ooh. picture of a shanty town, by the way. You yeah. like that? It's a good um, one. That is a, a Seattle shanty town from 1931, I think. Uh, oh. So. Your uh, Crawley Mass Hooverville wouldn't have the uh, the buildings in the background. It would be it's much more uh, in the middle of nowhere. But uh, here is a very uh, rudimentary map of the grounds, and so you see the outline of the main uh, estate, the summer house, um, and then in the back uh, those three outbuildings. As you approach the uh, sort of grand entrance. You hear a noise towards the west. It's like, <laughs> it's coming from the thick undergrowth, like to the left, but you look up the path and in the moonlight, you still can't see anything you hear a sound coming from the undergrowth in that direction. 
<laughs> Preston will start walking over there. I'm right behind you, Preston, buddy. Leo follows. Revolver out. Aloy! Aloy! Is that you? Help! Help! You follow that voice and you see half buried in the undergrowth a body wearing nice clothes considering the condition of this person because as you approach you can see this man fully let me show you a, a picture of the situation here oh ooh! his flesh bulges in weird places and writhes all over and his body is like twitching uncontrollably like there's some puppeteer inside of him moving it and is that a gun in his hand uh does he have a gun in his hand uh i don't know what the hell that is looks like an apple his, his intestines he's just happy to see oh me. yeah no that's uh <laughs> that's uh <laughs> Yeah, that's a part of his b body that's like just bulged in a weird place. And he's just like, <laughs> I needed specimens. Was gonna start over the device. What's your name? The device. <laughs> Malloy. What found device? Our scumbag. Where is the device? <laughs> and he can't really make out words. Um, just to show you on the map, he's over to the west here. This imagine this being much more uh, thickly settled, um, but there is a path leading around the house, um, and he's just. Uh, and as you're all standing over him, questioning him. Uh, a fat, pale, leech-like parasite crawls out through his eye socket, barely oh. displacing the eyeball itself, and then goes down his face and back up through a nostril. <sighs> oh! Everybody, give me a sanity check. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> a two. This is the best I've ever rolled in my life. <laughs> I rolled a three. Wow. <laughs> I rolled a 60 over 34. Oh, no. I rolled an 81 over 17. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seeing this strange thing, uh, Peachy and Shirley take one point of sanity damage. Still ticked. Really? Uh, yeah. And Leo and Preston... Give me a D6 roll each. Oh, no. Six. You got this show, buddy. Oh, oh, no. Man. Four. Four. Dude. So Dude. You took, uh, six in one pop. I need you to give me an intelligence roll. If you fail the intelligence roll, you're okay. If you succeed... You understand the full brunt of what has just happened, and you will go temporarily insane. Yeah, I succeeded. 18 under 50. Oh, no. Oh, I, hard no Leo. I hard succeeded. You hard succeed. All right, so Leo sees this. All of you are like, oh, you're like holding back from retching. It was so disgusting. Preston, you just get like a thousand yard stare into the uh, this field, and then you all hear. And Leo just runs off back behind Leo. the uh, house. He's a beautiful the, stride. Yes, he gracefully, like a gazelle, runs towards the back in the direction of the outbuildings. I gotta oh get him. I'll get Damn, him. does he have I'm a nice run vest. full speed and try and tackle him. Yeah, Preston's gonna run right behind Shirley because, like, he doesn't want to be anywhere near that body anyway. Like, no. He's just no, running, running away. Yeah, you now Leo. know getting too close to these things, whatever's in there could get in you. It's happened to Dr. Coombs. It's probably happened to Ned. 
So you guys just make off in the direction for Leo. You see him. He's left a path because he's kind of gone off the path. So he's cutting through the weeds. They're inside. They're gonna... Leo! There could be bear traps. You find Please Leo. Please together. Bear traps. Yeah, you find Leo over near the buildings and he's covered, uh, like his arms are all cut from running through the weeds. He's got little blood marks all over his arms. <laughs> they're inside him, like Albertine. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're inside him. Get it well. together, man, get it together. Yeah. Do some like vocal warm-ups. I don't know, just center yourself. Uh, Peachy, you gotta slap him. I, I might kill him by accident. All right, I slap him. <laughs> but I'm holding his shoulders for her. Get yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for Billy <laughs> and Esther. <laughs> <laughs> red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah, that's Come right. Red, Do your crazy right. actor leather, stuff. Yeah. Yellow leather. Good, good, good. Come on, keep going. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red what other kinds yellow, of leather? Red, red leather, yellow. And he <laughs> goes into a full-on vocal warm-up, and his articulators are especially attuned. And that's enough. To, that's enough to remind you of your former self, and you uh, snap out, snap out of this uh, temporary insanity. Thank you, thank you, Peachy, for that. The slapping it was hey. it was it was great. Surely, thank you, you for time, not slapping buddy. me. I you would have died probably. I'm I'm very frail. <laughs> um, now what that we're out by here? these outbuildings, do we see anything new? There are two small sheds, and then there is one large stone structure with a big iron door uh, that appears to be padlocked. Uh, the sheds are unlocked, as far as you can tell. Padlocked, you say? Mm-hmm. When well, I see a padlock, I look over at Shirley. You feeling lucky? We all slowly <laughs> rotate our heads toward Shirley. <laughs> Shirley flexes. Two for O. Oh no, was it my fists or my biceps that were loose here, Ethel? I'm having a moment. <laughs> Take out your fists. <gasps> okay, good. <sighs> well, <laughs> Laverne and Shirley flex. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go try that padlock. Okay. And I will whack it as hard as I can. Smack it. Ricky the ladle. 68, but I is still a regular success. Surely, uh, she got the brawn. Still a regular success. Uh, I'm gonna say that's enough to smash it off, uh, but now the lock is unusable, whereas the other one was perfectly popped. Uh, this building's about 20 feet long, 10 feet high, and of modern construction compared to the estate, which uh, could be 50, 60 years old. No windows, black iron door. Now unlocked. Seems like a key hiding place for a machine, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Maybe, maybe but maybe they keep it inside. Inside the house there. Whatever's in here, though, is enough to want them to lock it up safe. Is the smell any stronger here, or is it on par? Every step you take, it changes, and it's just, it shouldn't smell the way it smells. Can't quite put your finger on it. All right, can we, uh, can I stealthily try to open the door? Sure, give me a stealth roll. Been rolling hot so far. 92 over 40. (laughs) Dice heard you. So you, uh, push the the iron door open you try to move it slowly and you misjudge its weight and you slam it open and there's just darkness inside looks like there are electrical lights on the ceiling um, but they're not on the wall in which the door is set is surrounded by electrical panels cables various switches on the wall And it looks like some of these cables run through conduits to a huge iron circle set in the stone floor. This is it. The circle is twisted and has strange designs 
carved into it. Looks like the floor is pretty badly stained, and immediately when Leo slams that door open, you get smells of vomit, ammonia, and strong spices in the air. In addition to the circle, you see wooden workbenches running along two of the walls, and they're covered with all sorts of things, but from outside the building, you can't really tell. There is what looks like in the back of the room, a floor to ceiling tank on rusted iron supports. I want to take a look at the tank and everything connected to it. And Shirley knows a thing or two about working around her dad's shop, and she's got some skill in mechanical repair. Okay. Let me uh, reveal the uh, inside of this. Shirley goes in and heads over to this tank. Looks like there's a padlock on the lid and trickles of condensation running down the glass. It's filled with murky water. You can't tell, but it looks like there might be things moving inside of it. Do the rest of you enter as well while Shirley's checking this out? Yeah, well, I walk around slowly. the circle, not through it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just don't don't touch nothing without giving any warning. I don't know yep. what any of this is. Preston is like he's starting to lose it. He's freaking out. He's gonna walk in, but he's just paranoid, like looking everywhere for something to come out at them. So I'm gonna do a, a spot hidden roll while she's walking up there. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah, is there a roll to just to roll to see like what we can use to turn on the lights? Like which of the switches might control that? Um, like, yeah. Uh, what is there? Uh, what is mechanical it? Mechanical repair or yeah, spot mechanical hidden. repair, something like that, or spot hidden. But uh, okay. mechanical repair because there's so many different switches. Uh, you, you don't want to just start turning them on. You don't know what they do. So give me a uh, press in spot hidden, and then give me Leo's mechanical repair or something like that. Uh, Fifty six under sixty five. Oh, there's electrical repair. I'll do that's, that. That's the one. Thank you. And I fail. Okay. Uh, This is what you see, uh, Preston. You see uh, cables leading uh, into the ground and out the back. And so you think that these cables lead to those two shacks. So it's very possible that power comes from there. Yeah, the power generators. Because you don't see any means of powering anything in here but you also don't know how everything works along the benches there are welding masks big long shiny metal forceps uh, like three feet long these forceps nets made of thick twine various knives ranging from daggers simple daggers to like big ass machetes there's a wooden box containing uh, a bunch of wax earplugs and then half a dozen round metal canisters about two feet tall eight inches in diameter uh they look to be made of aluminum with a lid that you could just twist on and off but Shirley goes over to the tank while leo is stymied looking for some sort of way to turn everything on you go over to the tank and it's just water dripping down And then suddenly you hear a sound that's like a high-pitched, chittering, bubbling noise, but it sounds muted, like it's coming from behind the glasses. It almost has a a melody to it, uh, but it seems so distant and so near at the same time. And then as you're standing there, just pressing up against the tank is the face of what looks like a tiny person at first. But as your eyes adjust to it, you realize that instead it looks like a small monkey that's been turned inside out. And its head is just one huge mouth filled with too many teeth and writhing tentacles. It's just like... Give me a sanity roll. Oh, God. Nope. Nope, for sure. Just made it. 
just made it. I'm going to say that uh, Leo and Preston were engaged looking at other things when this happened. You turn quickly and it's already receded into the water. That's good because I failed my roll. But surely <laughs> you're going to give me a D6, D6 oh sanity damage. I saw, I saw, I can't, I can't. What did I? It's a three. Three, okay. Uh, Preston is, yeah, you're right, he's not looking. He's just staring at the this, this stuff that he's seeing and he comes up and he's hovering over these like, what did you say? There was like wax ear yeah, it's like plugs? 30 wax ear plugs. He's going to see if there's any that fit like his ears. If they're like all molded individually or if they're like fit in anybody's ears or they just Yeah, the second stoppers. pair you fit, you put in feels better than the first pair. He's just going to like look around like suspiciously at everybody else and just like put surreptitiously put these earplugs in his ears. What are you doing? Shirley runs over to Peachy. What? <laughs> what are you doing? I well I got these here for a reason right? I don't know. Maybe there's something maybe the device makes some noise you don't want to hear. I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to take every precaution Peachy. Get off my back! Shirley's freaking the fuck out. Peachy, Peachy, did you see the, did you see what the, what was the thing and it was inside out and you could see its muscles and its vein and you could see the two, too many teeth, too many Get teeth. Get a hold of yourself, Shirley. No, I need a slap too. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for Billy and for Ethel and for Lucy <laughs> and, and Fred. And Albertine. Do, do it for Albertine. You gotta pull yourself together. You're the only muscle we have. I don't know if I can fight that you're thing. Tough. You're tougher than this. You're tougher than this, Shirley. I believe tougher in you. This. You got this. There's nothing that crazy little tooth monkey monster is no match for you. And it's in a tank anyway. You got this. You got this, Shirley. Let's just do whatever we can to keep it in the tank. <laughs> Does this sound is it pleasant? Is it neutral? It's if you didn't see what it was, it's it's kind of hauntingly beautiful. And then you think back to what Nancy Carver told you that the dummy sang oh. a horrible song. Oh. And that's the last thing she remembered. So they brought this creature. This is the mesmerizing creature, maybe. Leo levels his levels his revolver at it. That's a tank. Let's not yeah. get it out of the tank. If we could leave it in the tank. How do we kill it? How do we kill it, Shirley? As long as it's not attacking us, just leave it be. Because this place. What if you What if you break it and it sets off something? I don't know. What if we poison the tank? Now you're talking. <laughs> We can, is there, can we look around and see if anything that like maybe gasoline or something we could use to uh yeah you look kerosene. around everything on the workbenches you don't see anything there might be something in the sheds though all right let's check the sheds anybody need any weapons uh yeah Preston is going to take a knife just like put it in his belt man I guess a knife would be a good thing to have did you say there were there was like eyewear like uh, goggles or face shields or what, what was what was the thing that you yeah, mentioned? Yeah, welding masks. Oh, I'm take one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take one of those too. That's a good okay. idea. Are there four? Oh yeah, there's like a half dozen of them. Uh, yeah. It'd be hard without light. You're not going to see a whole lot, but it could be helpful. Yeah, I might not. I'll like have it up, but like I'll just have it just in case because I feel like if there's stuff lying around in this area it might be useful so if there's would you say there was earplugs earplugs Ear yeah. uh force giant forceps welding masks uh and knives a net made of thick twine we should i mean at least take one of each of these and then hey, thick Preston, leather aprons yeah. and gauntlets Preston, can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you let's go what's that stuff in your ears it's an earplug i don't the, that thing 
whatever you saw in the tank. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it again. But you said that 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 it almost sounded. It almost sounded beautiful, right? Like it could have, like it could have been singing or something. Yeah, you can't and hear it. No, I, I can't hear it now, and I think that that's a good thing. And Peachy, you said that maybe they, they have this stuff here because. Yeah, you got they're all this using stuff it. Lying around. So what if R- Reggie's, what if Reggie's right, and he's looking down at this like big circle with all the things. He's like, what if they, what if they're opening some door to another world, and they bring through something like that, but they got to protect themselves from, from its, its horrible song right it comes out and i don't know they, they cover their face and they put in the earplugs and they they catch it in a net uh i don't know stab it a few times reason. yeah, yeah maybe some reason for them to be having this all around here laying around maybe if you hear the song you just you go to sleep like it's a dream and when you wake up you don't know what happened that song made you feel plugs. <laughs> the song <laughs> made you feel very weird inside but do you think that because it was behind the tank, it, if it had any real effect, it didn't quite get through to you? But there was a part of you when you heard it that was like, what? and you just you shook it off. Yeah. When I realized that, it. Shirley runs to the earplugs and puts them in. Yeah. Good idea. Pops How many pairs of earplugs in. are there? Thirty. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna plug my nose. As well, yeah. my nostrils <laughs> and my ears. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw on the welding mask and you'll live forever. Uh, you yeah, head out to the. Put on an apron and some gauntlets. We'll head out well. to those other shacks. All right, she put on the apron, gauntlets. Some of you have nose plug, ear plugs just, in your nose. <laughs> and just walking with a mask. giant pair of forceps. Yeah, <laughs> with the welding mask, I, I'm holding too many things. I put the welding mask back down. You go back there, uh, there are doors leading into both sheds, and if you open them up, uh, each contains two diesel generators and good working order. Uh, and then in addition to the generators, there are lanterns and lamp oil. Uh, I don't know if you have any means of seeing in the dark beyond that. Uh, rusty gardening, implement, gardening implements, uh, tools for maintaining the generators, uh, and five large drums of diesel. Um, I'll take a lamp and some lamp oil, but then can we use some of the diesel to just pour it into the tank with the monster and see if it kills it? Uh, yeah, if you pop the padlock, I'll say Shirley's on a roll with padlocks, so you can just kind of hit it, and then uh, you want to try and open and pour some diesel into the tank. Uh, oh, Leo, uh, are you sure about this? I mean, I know we'll get the padlock off, but what if it was padlocked for a reason? I mean... How yeah, big what is the we, opening on top? Yeah. What if it's a good swimmer, Leo? What if you open it up and it's out before you even have a chance to poison the water? You guys are right. All right, all right, all right. And you're right, you're right. Instead, I, can we take, like a, take a wrench to, the, wrench to the generators and see if we can cut off electricity back here? Yeah, they're it off was- right now. Um... You, so you could uh, you could destroy them so that no one could turn the electricity on, uh, or you could power them on. Um, you would think there's a chance that this powers the house. So if the lights are still in working order in the house or any other electrical implements, you would need the power from here. Oh. Uh, but you could just straight up destroy it because if it is powering whatever that circle is and whatever is going on in the warehouse, uh, you would be able to shut that down. I mean, that seems like a safe option to me, but... But we're right here with Diesel on the edge, hovering above this tank. We've broken the lock. We just need everybody ready. She's gonna do it. <laughs> you ready, Leo, to pour? I'll lift the tank lid. Press the... P- <laughs> That's the welding mask over his face. <laughs> yeah, I pull the welding mask down as well. Pulls out a knife, yep. or it grabs a net. Revolver. He's like, he's like, he's like peachy. Get this with me. In case it jumps out, maybe we can catch it. Is that it? Oh, all right. Okay. In my mind, it's like you a butterfly You want to catch net. it rather than shoot it? <laughs> well, they're going to try to shoot it. If it gets away from them, you know, if it gets past Shirley, I'm saying. All right. I've got the lid in one hand and Ricky the ladle in the other. <laughs> Let's go. Ricky the ladle. Yeah, and Leo's ready to pour weapon. the diesel in. I right, based him to death. Give me a luck <laughs> How did roll. this happen so fast? You're just about to walk away. This is amazing. Three, two, one. 
Give Who's me luck a roll? luck roll from whoever's pouring the diesel in. Oh god, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just a D100? Mm-hmm. Does it have anything, have, does this roll yes. have anything to do with my current luck? <laughs> yes! Mm-hmm. You have to I roll have to get, under your current John, dude. Well, that's just not gonna happen. Let's just see what happens. See how badly it goes. Okay. What's your luck? Oh, I have six luck right now. <gasps> wait, 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 hold on, Leo. <laughs> How about you lift the lid and I pour the diesel? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. We, switch. Switch. We, switch. Switch. we climb over to the other side. It's okay. not much better. Ready? One, two, three, two, one. Two, one. Oh, I can't spin luck on a luck roll. <laughs> it's a uh. 21. Oh, but I need so 18. Oh. Can I push it? Can you push luck? What do you do differently? Climb into the tank. Now, don't forget, a failed push <laughs> is bad consequences. <laughs> I feel like whatever happens next is going to be bad, no matter what. It's true. Uh, if you want to push it, yeah, tell me. Just tell me what you do differently. Like, uh, I imagine you, uh, Leo's trying to lift you, and he's a little out of practice. He's a little weak from the disease, and he kind of loses you a little bit. Uh, so are I think you gonna we're try on top of the tank and the tank has an opening. That's what I'm picturing. Okay. What if the what if you use the ladle to prop open the lid? Risk Ricky? <laughs> it's a big gamble. <laughs> yeah, especially so when you need it. It's a big gamble. <laughs> They've been together for so long. I shot Ricky history. into the opening. a lot of history. <laughs> okay, you shove Ricky into the opening so you can hold it to pour it in. Yeah, two-handed pour. 31. 31. The good news is the diesel makes its way in. You're trying to pour it fast while the ladle is, is, is just kind of teetering back and forth. But the minute that diesel hits the water, just like blah, 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 tentacles come up and grab the ladle, pull it in, and the gate shuts. <gasps> Ricky! Ricky! Ricky, no! and the diesel yeah. fuel just fills up the, the tank and now you can't see anything, but you just hear like <laughs> things bumping again, several things bumping <gasps> against the walls of the tank inside. I take my good lock and I put it back on. Ah, Chekhov's lock finally came in handy. You lock the tank back up. I just put my hand on Shirley's shoulder and say, Ricky's ladle and soup in heaven now. <sighs> the ladle Sorry. pushes its face against the tank. <laughs> Shirley! <laughs> it doesn't get any easier. It doesn't Floats get away any easier. Like, like Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> sinking beneath the... <laughs> what are you going to do here? Are you turning the power on or killing the power or ignoring the power and going for the house? You've okay, got lanterns, you've got oil, you've got welding masks. Are there matches? Like, do we need matches for these lanterns? How do these lanterns work? Uh, with the lamp oil, uh, I would say you probably have a couple of matches on you. We you got matches? All yeah. right. Okay. If we got matches, and we got oil, and something's coming after us, we could douse them in oil and light them on fire. It's true. It's true. We could put Roscoe out of his though. misery. They infect people with these with these worms. We I could don't know burn, if fire will stop it. We could burn Roscoe Malloy's body to see if it kills the little creatures inside of him. Yeah. Now there's an idea. I have our own experiment. <laughs> <laughs> see how he likes sciency it. Sciency stuff with sciency <laughs> stuff. Puts the hood down on the, the <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna run over to the table and put on the apron and the welding mask. Okay. Gloves. Ready. Forceps. <laughs> so we can we can. Oh, so forceps! Can... Yes, we need to like move them around. Three foot forceps with just one match in the end of it. <laughs> 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 All right, so you head back to uh, Roscoe, dump uh, lamp oil on him. Jesus. Who sets, who sets the match and lights him on fire? He's just like. Ah. Yeah. He's choking on the lamp oil. <laughs> oh, help. Who lights the match and lights Roscoe on fire? Uh, at least take him out first. 
Too oh dangerous. Can't can't get too close. Oh, you Preston see. turns away. He can't look. He walks. He walks away. Penelope takes a matchbox, <laughs> lights one single match, as you see in the darkness. She flicks it over towards his body. The match spins in midair, hits Roscoe. He's just ah! his eyes are like bulging out of his head. <laughs> He catches fire, and it spreads pretty quickly, and he's just immolated immediately, and you can't even hear him cry out. He dies almost instantly. The flames go off into the weeds and start to spread a little bit, and then they fizzle out as well. Everybody roll a spot hidden. Twenty-five under forty. Fifteen under sixty. I failed. Uh, 44 under 65. 44 under 65. So uh, I got the second highest, not not like an extreme, but I did get a... Like a hard success. Hard success. Uh, what about Shirley? Shirley failed 48 over 45. All right. So uh, Preston and Leo, you see something like emerge from his mouth as the fire's going on, but you can't quite make it out however uh peachy you see it looks like a like an eel or something covered in like almost like little holes maybe mouths and it's just like blah, 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 it comes out doesn't make that noise but it, that that's the the general feeling blah, 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 and it skitters in flames into the weeds <gasps> You guys see this? You're like, what the hell was that? And you got a really good look on it. Some sort Can of eel. Uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, do you had your your firearm out? So uh, I do. I don't have the stat, stats for a revolver though. That's okay. Uh, you just got to know your firearms, and then somebody try and uh, look up oh, what the okay. damage okay. the damage one, on it is. One d ten, range of fifteen yards. Okay. It's a tough shot. It's a tiny little thing. I rolled an extreme success. I rolled a 10, and I needed uh, to get under 60. Okay, you rolled an extreme Holy success. Holy shit. You're a crack shot. Uh, it tried to dodge, but it only rolled a hard success. So your extreme success passes. Oh, nice. You hit it. Uh, roll damage. What would you say was the damage on that? D10. 1d10. 1d10. Well, a nine. Oh. All right, so this thing comes out and starts wriggling away, and Peachy just boom hits it, and it dies. Wow. Amazing. Wow. So they can be killed. All right. Well, at least we know what we're dealing with. And you just see Peachy, this. Peachy, I'm sure I'm glad you're on my side. Peachy, where'd you learn to shoot like that? You know, you work in a bar in a speakeasy for so long. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta handle all the tough guys that come in. I'm a wow. delicate woman. <laughs> well, you handled that. Uh, Preston's gonna like walk up to it, eyes wide, and see like if it's really dead. So I kind of get close and poke at it with like a stick. Careful. Poke at it, and now that you get a good look at it, it's like nothing you've ever seen. Give me a sanity roll. Oh. <gasps> no, he's... No. Why would he do that? <laughs> Why? Why would he do that? Oh my god. I succeeded. 10 under 13. <laughs> nice. All right. You take zero damage on a success, whereas the <sighs> other one was uh, one. But you see it, and you probably tell them, don't look at it, don't look at it, because you, who have been a doubter all along, now see something from another world. It looks like a lamprey, like an eel, but it has 50 tiny little mouths all over it and long spikes, all of different sizes coming out of it. It's it's horrific. Holy it's not man. even like something you would see if you looked up sea creatures that only seven people that have ever seen. It's like nothing from this world. Can and all the mouths that closing. Can you imagine that around inside you? Some what do you see, Preston? Don't look at it. It's, it's some sort of demon. A devil or something. It's the devil's work. It's... 
Reggie was right. It comes from someplace else. I... I can't... And, and grab him like by the back of the off. shirt. Come on, step away from there. <sighs> Get a hold of yourself. Yeah, do... Do your, do your thing, Peachy. Well, I don't know. Which I, I lift up the mask that he's wearing <laughs> and then put it back down. Oh. <laughs> you better? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. You know what? I think... I do. I think... I think this is the devil's work. Yeah. I think that... I think that we gotta... We gotta do our best here to... To cleanse this place. There's, there's a lot of evil here. And... And you know what? I know what you said, Cheryl. I know you said that, uh, that we might not make it out alive. But I think... I think if God is on our side, we're gonna be okay. I Call think that he wants this evil day. defeated. Yeah. <laughs> she takes her shotgun and with one hand goes... Tch, tch. <laughs> she doesn't know how to aim it, though. Now that we've lit a guy on fire and immolated him and fired off a revolver and maybe the idea of stealth is um, not really in our in our, our playbook anymore, can we just smash this window that we're standing next to and get into the house that way? Uh, this window, for example, right in front of the library, or, well, you don't know, it's a library. Wow. Shocker. Oh, spoilers. Get uh, late. Spoilers. Get late for all the ballots. It's not, it's not important. Uh, it's shuttered, <laughs> but the way the house is, uh, whatchamacallit, the way the house has fallen into disrepair, it's shuttered in a way that you can't even... Uh, break through the shutter um, from where you guys were I can tell you you see uh, the main door to the house looks like a way in and in fact you saw that the door was ajar as you came up to it uh, before you went off to go find Roscoe's body uh, there is another door uh, off to the side here that looks like it hasn't been compromised um, and then there was a big set of uh, windows in the back that looked like the only other uh, way you could access it. To the east here is like a large gallery uh, surrounding uh, the the east wing of the house. So there are stairs leading up to uh, just a, a, a walkway around. Uh, looks like it used to be nice, but now there's glass everywhere. Um, so you're pretty much limited to the front door. This uh, side door looks like it, it could be passable. Um, and then uh, the windows in the back here are the only ones that looked unshuttered and uh, unmarred by whatever's happened to this house. Well, if we go through the back, maybe we can get a good look at what's inside first. Right. Sounds good, Peachy. All right. Let's After do it. After we check out the house, though, I want to see what happens when we light up the machine. Um, Leo's gonna grab some diesel from one of the sheds, and when we when we get inside the house, he's just gonna start spreading it. So eventually, we can just burn this place down. Because it feels okay. like that would be eventually a good idea. Okay. Yeah. And you 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 know the thing about diesel? Diesel burns very slowly, um, so you'd have plenty of time to get out of there um, if you were to uh, light it up. Um, but if you needed to burn it quickly, diesel's not the the best option. But you guys are going to go around the back to this window? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, you get back there, and you see a big window that... Uh, it's like a, a, a broken set of French windows. It looks like they lead into a conservatory. Uh, there's broken glass and rubble all over the floor inside, weeds poking up through the floorboards. There's furniture in there, you think, but there it's all covered in dusty sheets. There's a damp, musty smell emanating outward towards you as you approach the window. Uh, you could climb in through the window, um, but I'm gonna need a, a dex check to avoid uh, being cut on the shards of broken glass embedded in the frame. Can you imagine having a place this nice? And not taking care of it? I mean, the whole camp could live here. 
It's a real shame. It's a crime. It's what it's it so is. Much wasted space. Oh yes. You mean if you could just just a couple of this a little bit of TLC would make this place quite beautiful. Surely a little dusty. A few a few monsters roaming around. It's fine. Surely is distracted by these, this conversation and doesn't notice the broken glass because she rolled a 99 on her dex check. Oh no. So Shirley uh, hops in and takes two points of damage as she cuts herself Gah, on the Son glass. Son of a, my new sports coat. <laughs> uh, Leo rolls this, Leo fails his dex check as well. 61 over 55. Leo takes two points of damage as well. Your arms are all cut up from when you had your bout of madness that sent you running through the weeds, and now uh, your your leg cut right through your already uh, poor, shitty pants and cut your leg, <laughs> and now you're uh, gushing blood out of your thigh. Uh, Peachy succeeded with a 49 under 60. Peachy is, uh, is a trained warrior that just shot. <laughs> An otherworldly creature after burning a man alive. She hops <laughs> gracefully through the broken window. What about Preston? Preston fails with a 72 over 55. He takes one point of damage. So three of you are cut getting in. But you now find yourself in this conservatory. There looks to be one door to the south leading out. We'll go. Leo pours some diesel behind them as we go. He starts okay. splashing it around. Leo, with this bucket of diesel, pours Wait it a out. Minute. Are you sure? I mean, the whole camp could live here. Surely the Not place is infested with monsters. Right, right. Okay. We can yeah, be sure. I'll I, yeah, I, I like where your heart's at. But I think that whatever's here has seeped into the very wood itself. I don't know if we'd be able to clean it out. It's all this enough. gateway business. We don't know if, if destroying that thing's gonna stop whatever that gateway nonsense was. All right, hold on. I'm gonna open this door. He opens the door to the south, sticks his head out, looks around. You open the door to the south, and you see a corridor leading to the east and to the west. Uh, are you guys using your lamps to see? Because it's dark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can be holding the second one. Okay. So you got guns in one hand. Some of you have lamps in the other. Yeah. You, you see. And I, uh, I'm not, I don't have a welding mask on anymore. <laughs> you see, uh, the door to the conservatory leads directly to the main entrance, and then uh, the corridor spreads left and right to the east wing and the west wing of the estate. The hallway looks to be uh, largely intact, but fairly water damaged as well. You see to the west a, a grand flight of stairs leading up to the second floor. Um, the carpet is uh, sticky underfoot as you approach. Do you go out into the hallway? Yeah. It's like, Towards the quack, stairs? Quack, quack. It's like squelching and slurping noises well, what as you're it? walking. Yeah, uh, look, putting lanterns down towards yeah. that. What yeah, is it? Just, it's wet, but it doesn't, the way your foot's sticking to it, it's, it doesn't feel just like water. The smell in the whole corridor is like meaty and organic in a nauseating way. There's also this smell of maybe excrement or bile coming from the back of the house. And the other thing you notice when you open the door is the air inside is unusually warm for this time of year. Maybe that warmth, wherever it's coming from, mixed with the water damage is producing this sticky feeling. But it's also repellently moist in the air as well. And, and as you all get out, from time to time, you feel this gust of sticky air wash over you. You and all then, laughed at me for plugging my nose up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing it too. And then every so often you just feel it again. It's just like this wash 
of sticky air. You might have been right about that devil stuff, Preston. I feel like we're walking into the belly of a whale or something. Yeah. Hell itself. Uh, Preston is going to turn towards the east and just start walking. Revolver raised. Oh, scan up the stairs for a second. Uh, can I do a, a quick listen to see if I hear anything? Up. So the stairs, 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 the west side? stairs are to the west, yeah. Sorry, um, I misread it. All right, I'm just going to walk east then to the door. Okay. Um, yeah, I've revealed here the stairs leading uh, up to the west, but you walk towards the east. There's a small door to the north and then a, uh, a larger door to the east. So you walk along. He'll go to the door to the east. Okay. It's unlocked. He'll open it. You pop it open, and there's just a huge ballroom. It looks like the ceiling has collapsed in this once great room. The, f- the floor is broken, covered in rubble. Might be hard to walk around in there. You do see of the, the few things that have survived are a, a couple of floor-to-ceiling mirrors, but the mirrors are cracked. Oh, uh, spot hidden. Okay. Uh, 58 under 65. You see in the mirror closest to you, there's like black fluid trickling out of the cracks in the mirrors and trickling out to form a small pool on the ground at the foot of the mirror. What the hell? He starts walking over, lantern out in front of him towards the mirror and the goo gets close and examines it further looks at the mirror closer do you notice anything different when he's close you look close and yeah it looks like the mirror is bleeding it smells like blood as well and you look down at the pool and you look back up at the mirror down at the pool and you look back up in the mirror and there's a reflection of a man in a hood and robe standing directly behind you give me a sanity roll Oh, <laughs> fuck that. Oh, I hate that. I hate that so much. Oh, dude. I rolled a seven under 13. That's <laughs> two in a row holding it together. So you see this and you turn around quick <gasps> and there's no one there. Preston, what you doing in there? Did you see something? Did you see someone in here? Leo is just pouring pouring diesel all over the room. I'm still in the hallway by the stairs. I wanted to check out this room opposite the stairs. All right, I'm, okay. I'm coming, Cheryl. I'm coming back. There's nothing in here but a a mirror. There's this some kind of goo on it. Anyway, and he walks back over towards Cheryl. You guys ever I'm play Bloody Mary? I'm touching strange goo. You don't know when a bug could crawl out of it. You guys ever play Bloody Mary growing up? I did. Oh. I'm still scared of yes. mirrors in the dark. Dude, yep. It scares the crap out of me. <laughs> I guess the scariest part is how it's real and she really manifests. Yeah, that's <laughs> my. Uh, <laughs> it's not really scary, uh, except for the part where it's real and it. Yeah. And she yeah. murders people, yeah. That's what I remember. Uh, which uh, door are you checking out there, Cheryl? So it's just south of the staircase. Um. Is it the one uh, to the oh. left of the room uh, where you That's walked in? Okay. All right. So Shirley goes over and checks out uh, the room right to the left of the entrance. This is you a open weird... Open real fast and shove my lantern in. Shove, you shove your lantern in. Um, uh, pre- where's Preston? Are you still uh, at the mirror room? No, he walked back over to Shirley. Okay. Are you guys all with Shirley? Just yeah. sticking together for now? Revolver out or revolver up. You open the door and ooh, smell of bile just hits you in the face. Again, bile, not excrement this time, but bile. And you see this viscous greenish yellow uh, liquid dripping down the walls and pooling on the floor. You're right. Burn this place to the ground. Leo, Leo appears behind you and just starts shaking Diesel into the room. Get that spot, the bile spot. Preston, is that what you saw? Something like that. Did it look like that? It was a little different color, but yeah. It looked there's like an, that. There's another door on the opposite side of the room. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. 
I don't know if I'm ready to walk right through that stuff. You said it's coming from the ceiling? It's like dripping down the walls. Looks like it's coming from the point where the ceiling meets the walls. Dripping down the walls and there's pools all over the ground. We gotta go upstairs. Whatever it is, it's up there. Just try not to touch anything. What do you want to do, Shirley? Uh, I feel like we gotta keep going. I mean, what if there's something else on this floor? Right, go ahead. Do it. I go open the door on the other side of the room. Do the rest of you follow her? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as the last one of you walks in the door, (gasps) all of a sudden, the door slams behind you and the ceiling uh, wrenches in a way you hear this like and you can feel the ground beneath you start to bubble and heat up we now go into initiative to see what you're going to do here what this is all based on your deck score to react. Now, if you want to use your readied firearm, you add 50 to your deck score. If you want to just start firing at something, if your goal isn't to fire, it just goes by your decks. Right now, you feel the ground beneath your feet bubbling in a way that can cause harm to you. But you have a chance to act. The door has slammed behind you. It has plunged the room into darkness with the exception of the light that you have. So, I asked you for your decks pre-sesh. Peachy and Shirley are in the 60s. Leo and Preston have a 55, but Shirley has a 65 and Peachy has a 60. So, Shirley's going to Shirley, take go. the shotgun and shoot at the window. Shotgun, Ooh. shoot at the window. All right, give me your uh, firearms. This would have you go on dex 110, because I would add, or 115, because I would add 50 to your score. Um, all right, so you're going to use one of the bullets in that shotgun. Shell. Fire it. One of the shells, excuse me. And fire it at the window. Okay, roll firearms. Do you want to give me a bonus die, because it's like a really cool idea? It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll give you a bonus die. Yes, okay. What's I'm gonna a bonus need I'll give you a bonus die because you're cool. I don't okay, remember. 65 is my first one. Um, bonus die so is I your keep roll. the five and I reroll the six. Got it. Yeah, you roll it twice. 75. All right, so two fails or one success? Uh, I mean, one fail, I just got a chance to reroll the, the tens digit. Okay, well, you get, you, for, for you cool. count. You, yeah, you, your, your better roll is the one we're going to count. So that was 65. a success. 65. Okay. And it close. was, they were both fails. Okay. All right. So you just, poof, <laughs> sh- sh- shell scatters on the wall uh, and uh, nothing happens. It goes oh, to no. PG. That I'm was such a good idea. At, I'm going to shoot at the ground. From where Shh. I sh- shoot at the ground. Okay. I feel like this is. Where, wherever it's closest by. Okay. Obviously without shooting myself in the foot. Mm-hmm. Fire away. Uh, so you said if I, if I, <laughs> if I shoot the gun, like I get a the bonus to my decks. Yeah, you just would have done this even faster. You get a, basically you get a plus 50 for your de- to your decks for the purposes of determining who goes first in the round. It doesn't add okay. to your skill. It just adds to your the speed at which you can act. Your gun was ready. You can fire it. Okay. Um, I, I failed this miserably, though, because I, I rolled a 98. <laughs> oh, so that's a that's a fumble, I believe. Uh, is your skill over 50? Yes. All right. If your skill is over 50, only 100 is a fumble. So it's not a fumble. It's just a fail. Had you fumbled, I would have had you accidentally shoot one of your companions uh, in the foot while you were aiming at the ground. But <laughs> luckily, uh, that's not the case. However, you fire and uh, <laughs> somehow miss the ground uh, or you fire <laughs> straight into this bubbling liquid and nothing happens. It now goes to uh, Preston's turn. Oh God! Um, you got to get out of this room. Yeah, uh, he he like he basically he's losing it. I mean, he's right at the cusp, and he like see Shirley shoot uh, at the window, and though it doesn't shatter, he's pretty convinced that like it's weakened. So he is going to run at it full speed and try to jump out the window. Run at it full speed. 
jump out the window. Okay. Uh, I like for that. Well, you tell me what you'd like to roll use for that. Um. Uh, I I would say dex I, or uh, athletics. Is there an athletics? I was going to say strength because you're trying to break through the strength of the uh, window. Yeah, but like, you know, speed, launch angle, turning. It's it's pretty dexterous to put the get the best power out of it. But mm-hmm. uh, the score is the same either way. Yeah, but I would uh, say roll strength and uh, give yourself a bonus die for the fact that you're speeding up and running towards it. Okay. So I roll the D100, and then I can re-roll one of the die, my choice. That's that's No, the, just okay. the tens. Yeah, just it's not tins. even a re-roll. You, you, you roll both, and you count the better one. Won't be needed. That is a six. Ooh. An extreme success. Rolling rocks right now, Preston. All right, an extreme success. You barrel uh, into that <gasps> shutter that was all broken down from the slightly collapsed ceiling, and you barrel straight through it and land on the ground outside. Uh, you will take uh, two points of damage from the uh, the wooden shards that have cut into you, but now there is an exit here. Uh, and it is Leo's turn. What do you uh, do? Leo is torn between lighting a match and throwing it on the diesel he's already <laughs> spread <laughs> and just following Preston. But I think he's just going to follow Preston. <laughs> All right. He's also he's also not not he's teetering on the edge of a uh, of a uh, stable. We'll say. All right, Leo falls, Preston gets out, doesn't take any damage because Preston took all the damage in breaking through the wall. However, at that point, everyone roll a sanity roll. What is happening here? Why is this yeah. ground coming alive? Uh, uh, uh. <gasps> I rolled a one. Oh, uh-huh. critical success! On something uh, that won't Leo fails. That much. <laughs> Surely Leo fails. fails. Surely fails. Preston? This roll of luck is unbelievable. I just rolled an 11 under 13. <laughs> if you wow. succeeded, you take one point of sanity oh. damage. If you failed, you take 1d6 from experiencing this. Go ahead and give me your d6s. Four if, for Leo. Okay. Oh. If you roll a five or more, it's about two. Okay. Two. Now, keep track of uh, your insanity loss here. Obviously, we can't remember what happened last week, but if you uh, lose over 20% in one game time, certain bad things happen. But no one has a bout of madness here because you haven't taken five points in one pop. However, at that moment, even though Preston and Leo have got out, the floor starts to damage uh, Peachy and Shirley. Shirley takes three points of damage and... Uh, Peachy takes two points of damage as this acid starts eating away at your shoes and burning your feet. I hardly had souls on these to begin with. Did you say 20% of your current sanity is a, is a break? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to... Well, wanna... you're at the beginning of the day, like you're starting sanity. Um, yeah. Well, I started this session with 34 sanity points. Mm-hmm. I'm currently, I've currently lost 10, which is 29% of that 34. Uh, 10, which is 29% of that 34. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to foul up your game session, but the, the, the same exact is true of me. I mean, I started the session with 17 and I've lost five. So that is 20%. Right. Okay. So you both have gone past your 20%. That's fine. It's good to know. I'll tell you how that's going to manifest. <laughs> uh, for, for you. Have fun playing all of our characters for the rest of the session. Yeah. Well, for you, you just have to realize that you have had a break. So the yeah. way you need to play the rest of the session, you are, you are no longer fully driving the car. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I will have certain uh, other ramifications for you. Uh, Shirley and Peachy, I'm assuming you're you just want to get out before you take any more damage. I've yes. lost 18 percent of my oh. at the beginning of the day. All right, so you're one break away from uh, being in the same boat. And I them. run out that window. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Peachy, same. I'm I'm running out. Yeah. Okay, so you won't take any more damage. Leo is uh, when he lands on the ground. He's like, <laughs> we gotta we gotta burn it all. 
and he lights a match once Peachy and and Shirley Rowney throws it into through the back through the open window. <gasps> throws are you it waiting back. for us, or were you just gonna do that? I was waiting. I was waiting for you all. I was waiting. Okay. You this throw. Is the room. It, it tried to digest us. It tried to digest us. You know that uh, diesel is more difficult to ignite than gasoline. Uh, it requires a sustained exposure to flame. And then once it ignites, it'll take the form of a growing intense burn, unlike the explosion that results when gasoline takes fire. So you throw the match in there and it goes out. Now, if you want to go in and light it and hold it there, you can. But Peachy, you would know that if there's a chance that Esther is still in there, the building is gonna burn down with her in it. Your, your friends are losing their mind. Maybe she's not in there though, but yes, they're not thinking about that. We came here for Esther, we can't, we can't just, if you, if you do that, we, maybe she's inside. Get a hold of these, who needs more slaps? I got a two for one deal. Slap look, hit me, give me, gotta cut me, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Look at Malloy. Just come here. Look Esther. at what happened to Malloy. You think she's gonna be fine in there? Fine and dandy? She's already gone. She's long dead. We if he know died, that. how's she gonna be? You He's right. We yourself. came for answers. We came to stop the things. We came to stop this madness that's infecting all of our people. We gotta get to the bottom of it. I think we should light up the machine. You wanna, what do you mean, light up the machine? Wanna, Shirley's oh, gonna start running back towards the shed. Oh my god. Are you losing your marbles? What if that makes things worse? Maybe I'm getting marbles. <laughs> do, you, do you split up? Do you guys want to just go rogue here and split up? Is someone in the corral this team? Yeah. <laughs> Preston's just gonna, Preston's gonna be like, all right, well, if she fires up the power, at least we'll be able to see inside. We could just go inside. And, and, and when the lights go on, we'll be able to see better. I'm not going back in there! <laughs> <laughs> Shirley's gone back to the warehouse. What's Leo doing? Uh, Leo is going to charge uh, through the front door and back <laughs> is he, inside. Is he lighting matches as he goes? He's got, he's got his lantern. He's like, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Uh, what is uh, Peachy, go Peachy doing? Peachy is running after Leo, trying to stop him. <laughs> and Preston? Preston will run after Peachy, just sort of desperately thinking maybe we could grab, maybe if Esther's alive, we could grab her before the building burns down or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, in game terms, when you lose more than five points of uh, sanity roll, you have that bout of madness. That's what happened to Leo. When you lose more than 20% in one day, you become indef indefinitely insane, which lasts as long as you rest. For the purposes of this game, I'm not going to take you out of it. Uh, I'm going to have you play it sorry, through. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You said which lasts as long as you rest. What do you it mean lasts, which lasts until you rest? It lasts until rest? you take a full rest and can So if you take your a full composer. rest, you can wake up and feel better. Right. Okay. But that, or I'm not giving you that option. You've got to no, just power for sure. through. Yes, I'd like to take insane. a, I'd like to take an eight-hour rest. I'm gonna sleep, <laughs> it, sleep it off in the car. I'm gonna sleep in the middle of that circle, there's the one with the designs bedrooms. all over it. Yeah, yeah, there, surely there's plenty of bedrooms. What? What'd you say? <laughs> uh, you, uh, you, all three of you enter the house. Uh, Penelope's trying to uh, get Leo to calm down. Preston's uh, on. Uh, on the heels of both of you, where are you heading? Are you going upstairs? Are you going deeper into these rooms? Let's, Let's go upstairs, upstairs Penelope. Upstairs, Let's go upstairs. Yeah. That's upstairs. probably where she is. If everything's leaking from up there, maybe she's up there, and maybe maybe uh, Shirley can turn the lights on, and we, we can get in and get out. You head up the staircase, right. and you see that most of the second floor has been completely decimated through either time or whatever is happening to this place. The roof is sunken in several places. There's gaping holes in the floor down the end of each hallway. One wrong step, you could fall through to the main floor. The only room that looks accessible at all is behind a set of double doors right near the second floor landing. And as you approach, you see that one of the doors is open, and it's swinging ever so slowly in and out and there's a moist air pushing its way out as the door swings on its hinges only darkness ah! 
can Leo be seen charges for that door. within. Leo charges towards the door. We go back out to the warehouse. Surely, uh, I'm assuming you are going to the generators and powering both of them on. That's right. All I right. know a thing or two about this stuff. <laughs> Power both of the generators on, and then you go back into the warehouse. And in the warehouse, there are switches all over the place. What kind of check do you want to roll to see if you can find the switches going to power the house? Or is your goal to power up this machine? Do you just start turning on everything? I want to power it all, baby. Can I use my intelligence? Uh, yeah, you can use intelligence unless you have uh, physics or electrical repair or anything like that. Intelligence would be your go-to. I don't have any of that. Okay, roll intelligence. 91. <laughs> I just start flipping switches. Just start. A <laughs> couple things happen. One thing is while the three of you are uh, watching Leo go rushing to the door, you hear power come on within the house, but the room ahead of you remains dark. But meanwhile, back at the warehouse, Shirley feels electricity uh, going like throughout the room. The lights in the warehouse turn on as well. And after about 30 seconds, as a strong electromagnetic field begins to uh, kind of take over the room, your hair is standing on end. The, there's a hum that starts up that is like subsonic and almost like bowel loosening. And it causes this profound fear and wrongness within you. And then after about 30, 40 seconds, swoom, the room warps as if the whole interior where that circle is, it, you're looking through like a heat haze, except from that haze bleeds a sickly yellow light. And then creatures begin to <gasps> manifest. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them resemble oh, like no. deep sea creatures swimming through the air, amorphous, tentacular, phosphorescent. Some are smaller than a fist, while others are so large that only parts of them manifest in the field of the device. Give me a sanity roll. Oh okay. my god. <laughs> 83. 83. Now give Inhale. me a d6 roll oh man four and that oh. puts me over my 20 percent puts you over 20 percent i think the only possible solution for this moment is that you are so drawn to this otherworldly power that you step on to the circle. I'll punch them all! <laughs> and then we go back to oh the master bedroom where Leo is just charging into the room. Diesel bucket in hand. Diesel right. bucket in hand. And Preston, by the way, is just yelling now. He's just like, Asta! Asta! Just to see if he gets any response while Leo's banging and running through rooms. Leo burst through the open door that was swinging on its hinges, and you see something you, you, your brain cannot even begin to comprehend. It looks like the whole room has been wallpapered and carpeted in wet red and purple velvet, including the furniture, like whatever's gone on the walls has grown down to begin to cover the furniture as well. There's just shapes there that you know used to be a bed, used to be a chair, but now just covered in this red slime. And every surface in the room pulsates. Give me a sanity roll. That I will most assuredly fail. Uh, I do, 40. <laughs> Give me a D6 sanity oh, loss. Dude, this is so much sand loss. Four. Four. Uh, let me know when you're at zero, folks. Okay. Uh, all right, so four, not five. However, you're just like... <gasps> I upend the diesel drum and just start dumping it onto the floor in front of me. Uh, you start dumping it on the floor in front of you. What do the rest of you do, uh, Preston and uh, Peachy? I'm running to try to find Esther. 
Yeah, we're just going, Esther, Esther. I'm just running to the next door and opening it, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, All right, the next door just falls right off your hand as you pull it and you look down and whatever this other room was, there's a hole just leading straight down. There are no <sighs> other accessible rooms on this floor. So do you run downstairs? Yeah. We gotta keep moving, yes. All right, so the two of you run downstairs. Meanwhile, uh, Leo, as you're standing there, just dumping diesel out. Leo, let's go. She's not up here. Maniacally, a tear just begins to open up on the wall, eventually opening up into this wide crack. And you can't help but look up and you see inside the hole wet tissue, like human tissue dripping with fluids and a single white protuberance sticking out that almost looks like a tooth. And then all of a sudden this low breathy rumble comes out that shakes the entire house and a blast of sticky air comes out. Globules of fluid cover you and you just hear this like I have returned Bring me flesh. And then what tongue lolls out and goes to grab you. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh my God. You may attempt to dodge this tongue that has uh, reached out to try and grab you. Okay. <laughs> Would you 91 roll? over 50. <gasps> <laughs> oh, no. The tongue grabs you. You take one point of damage, and then it pulls you directly into the hole in the wall, and the hole closes. What? Meanwhile, Preston and... There's not even a chance to, like, <laughs> we don't hear him scream. We can't help him. The diesel bucket falls out of your hands and it just lies on the floor, just dripping, dripping, dripping. I can't kick my lantern that I set down oh. onto the diesel? Oh, your story is not done, my friend. Oh, but let's go over <laughs> to Preston and Peachy. Preston and Peachy, you run downstairs. Which doors do you head for? Uh, we head to the west. Esther. To the library. Head to the west, okay? You're yelling <laughs> to Esther. Esther, you open uh, a door uh, door here. Door to the north, yeah. Yep. yep, and it looks like it leads to a kitchen area. You see um, a suite of rooms that make up the kitchens. There's like a main kitchen, a pantry, servants' quarters, and you didn't see what Leo just saw, but similar to that room, the walls have become largely organic. They're covered in the same same pulsating red flesh, but there are still patches of stained plaster and wallpaper showing through. The jams of the doorways look like they've become organic as well, and they twitch like sphincters. As you uh, enter the kitchen, uh, the floor don't is ever very- say that again. <laughs> Why did you say Why? that? <laughs> Straight out of the book. Uh, I love that. My favorite line in the whole adventure, the door jams. <laughs> now, the door I jams what, now I know like why this is your favorite module you've ever read. I have a Call of Cthulhu video where I think we say sphincter like 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never thought about twitching sphincter before, but now I'm going to think about it every day for the rest of my life. So mm -hmm. the sight Every of the time I see a door jam now, I'm just going to think it sphincters. Twitching, twitching like a sphincter. sphincters. <laughs> that provokes a sanity roll for both of you. <laughs> yeah, I uh, so. You know what? It's appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. It definitely needs a sanity roll. Been pushing like my luck this whole time. Twitchy sphincters. <laughs> Success I is zero. It. Success is zero. Joe, how'd you do, buddy? The twitchy sphincter sounds like a metal band. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I failed. Uh, but I'm like can I, I, I can spend luck on a sanity roll or no? No. Okay. So, yeah, so, I mean, fail. so you, you take I one. Give me one D4 worth of sanity damage. Uh, three. Oh, it's getting bad. Dude. So, Preston, you are out <laughs> of <laughs> your <laughs> mind. Spectre! Uh, I would say that uh, in addition to taking that sanity roll, as you come flying into the room, you slip on the secretions on the floor and boom, fall prone, and you're just covered oh. in these foul-smelling oh. liquids. Looking up at a twitching sphincter door, you see uh, an open doorway off the kitchen leading down. Oh. 
He scrambles up. PG! Get a hold of yourself! Never go to the basement! PG, look! Look! <laughs> and he points to the door. We gotta you, go there! You all hear the go, rumble. Go. Get up off the floor! Bring <laughs> right. flesh! He slips. What? Gets back up. Slips, gets back up, and then uh, he heads to the door. I got you nothing but bile. To the door. As you head to the door and look down, you see that the stairs are slick with dark liquid, and it's just pure darkness going down. He immediately, <laughs> like, he's running down, and he just goes off the edge of the first step because he's just, like, not controlling his movements at all. Did you, you have a lantern? It? Yeah, he's got a lantern. Oh, you did? Okay, because I did not, so I will follow you down there. But he, but he falls, so he's just like... You know, it even says any investigator heading down carelessly needs to make a hard dex roll. So (laughs) see if you make the hard dex roll. Okay, okay. I'll see see if you actually catch myself. Maybe I (laughs) catch myself. I can't believe Joe wanted to make himself fall (laughs) automatically. Dude. (laughs) Three. It's insane. You made it. I made it. Extreme success. All right, so this is what happens. You just go down carelessly, and you slip, but you catch yourself, and you kind of go, duh, 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 you know, when you go down a bunch of stairs, and you go, duh, 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 slosh, you realize the stairs go straight into a pool of the whole basement is flooded with some sort of foul-smelling liquid. You think it would probably go up to your waist or maybe higher if you wade through it, but in the distance, you hear a small voice. Oh. Help me. <gasps> Esther! Esther! Now we go back to the workshop. (laughs) She's down here, PJ! The last thing you hear. As you step onto the ring, Shirley. Wait, hold on. Did someone say the ring? The ring? (laughs) As you pass. Oh, that's right, you're in the ring! I'm a box. (laughs) You pass into the iron ring, perhaps for your final match. You find yourself in an utterly alien landscape. Human sensory organs are not capable of making sense of the constantly Uh, shifting environment. It's totally disorienting. The shapes of bizarre life forms, shifting dimensions, and skewed views of the reality you just left are completely overwhelming. You cannot make any sense of it. In many ways, what you perceive is still our world, but there's so much other dropped onto it because this device has opened up other dimensions overlapping on top of themselves. But because you live out of phase with these other realities, your mind is completely blown. I need a sanity roll, and I'll tell you right now, on a pass, you take 1d3 points. On a fail, you take 1d20 points of (gasps) sanity loss. Oh my god. Shirley, Shirley is in the shit. Steps into the ring for her greatest fight of all time. It's a fail. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, Shirley, no! A D20, you said? Yeah, D20. For Ned, I'll punch every one of you swimming <laughs> monstrosities until my fists turn inside out. <laughs> 16. Oh my god. God. (laughs) I have seven left. Oh my god. She's gone and she's just floating like a butterfly, singing like a bee. (laughs) Punching everything in sight as she is completely overwhelmed by these otherworldly creatures and parasites. Meanwhile, in that dining room where Preston busted out of the wall, a hole opens up and Leo is deposited through the ceiling into the dining room like this is all some digestive system. You fall and you take uh, two points of damage as the uh, acidic burns burn your skin. What do you do? You get up. What do you do? I get up and I am I'm in the dining room over here. Yes. Okay. I rush uh, back. I mean, I'm totally I'm totally lost at this point. I just got I got extra dimensionally swallowed. So uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Leo's not uh, functioning with a with you know a full deck. How many hit points you got left? 
I got nine hit points left. Okay, so even with those three, uh, that three damage, you're still pretty Club. strong, but you're in bad shape mentally. Do I hear them scree- shouting? Do I hear uh, Preston shouting about Esther? Give me a listen roll. All right, I'll do this. Uh, 42, but what is my listen? 40. Uh, spend luck. Spend the luck. Oh, I'll spend luck. Yeah, I'll spend two points of luck. Yeah, you hear, we're coming, we're coming. All and right. so do you follow the voice? I'm screaming uh, at the top of my lungs. I rush in in pursuit of that voice. You bust out the, the open hole in the uh, wall. You come back in through the main entrance and wipe, right when you walk through the main entrance, Albertine is standing there. <gasps> and she's wearing her outfit from No No Nanette but she's covered in these parasites, the parasite that uh, Peachy shot. And she's just like, Leo, help me, help me, Leo. They're all over me. You gotta get them off me, Leo. Please, please. Do I still have my lantern? Yes. I throw it so it smashes right underneath her to see if I can light her on fire. You throw the lantern at her. The lantern goes down on the ground and she's just immolated in fire. But what's really happening that you can't see is that the diesel has caught and the fire has begun to spread. (gasps) I'm sorry, Albertine. I'm (laughs) sorry I couldn't save you. Why? And she's just standing there on fire. We go back down to the cellars. You hear this little voice. Penelope, you hear it as well. It's coming from somewhere, but you've got to wade through whatever this liquid is to follow the sounds of the voice. Esther? And I, can I do a spot hidden? Yeah. I rolled a 34 under 60. So it's not a, it's not a anything special, but it, it makes it. If you want to spend luck to spend make it luck. a hard success, you yeah, could. yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, I'll I'll spend four luck points. Uh, to, all right, you spend four luck. Success. Uh, all right, so I'll say you're able to. Whereas Preston just went straight down and almost submerged himself. You uh, are a little more cautious, and you look around the corner and you see the str- this whole cellar stretches the whole length of the house. Um, but there are two side cellars, and from where you're standing, it's super dark, but you've got the light of the lantern. It looks like they've been converted into prison cells, and you see some movement coming from one of them, but the only way to reach it is you have to submerge yourself in this Ooh, I'll, I'll head towards water. it. Water. All right, I'll so head towards it. you go in, and it's about four feet deep, and so you're standing on your tiptoes. Preston, do you follow? Yeah, he's side by side with Penelope Peachy Keen. What's everyone's move speed? Eight. Eight. I'm sorry, uh, seven. Seven, okay. It's quartered because it's so thick. So you're just moving two. Basically, you're going ever so slowly. But eventually, you get over to where this cell is. And you see that there's a bunk bed that's been flipped on its side and a young girl is standing atop it to try and stay above the water. And uh, the cell is locked. And she's just like, help me, please. It looks like she's gonna faint and fall off the bunk. But the cell has a huge padlock on it and Shirley and her ladle are nowhere to be seen. Hang on, I'm gonna get you out of here. Help me, please. Um, Can I try to use the butt of my gun to like, Ran the lock. Absolutely. Try be a, 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 You could do a strength check or, uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be strength. I'll and I can, strength. I can tell you right now, the strength of this law. Oh, well, yeah, no, do, do a strength check or a locksmith okay. if you have it. Uh, I, I probably do not have locksmith. Yeah, I don't. So I'm gonna just do a, um, I rolled a 34 under 60. Okay. I, don't think I want to. Sp- I don't think I should spend luck points on it. Does it, what? What happens? You hit it, and uh, it looks like it's half broken, but it's still attached. Meanwhile, Preston takes one point of damage from this acid burning through you. You take none. Hit it again. Wait, wait what acid? From the uh, four feet of water? The four feet of water surrounding you is like burning into your skin. Ah! <gasps> 
We gotta get her out of here. We gotta go fast, Peachy. Get that lock off. The vapors are like going success. into your lungs as well. Hard success. Boom, 25. you knock it off, no problem. And she is just about to faint. Help me. I'm gonna try to open the lock or open the gate and get her out of there. Yeah, open the gate, get her out. Uh, you just pull her out and you hold her, her above there and Preston, you're helping. Uh, you start wading back towards the uh, end of the room. Uh, you take one point of damage, uh, Peachy, and uh, Preston, you take none. You're inhaling these acidic vapors as you make your way back towards those stairs and you get out of the water and you emerge. Now what do you do? You uh, you hear uh, sounds, or it feels very hot coming from the doorway. Uh, coming from the doorway? Sorry, what yeah, doorway? Yeah, the doorway where you entered the kitchen. But it's, it's open. It's open, yeah. Well, Preston is going to go up the stairs first with Peachy and Esther behind him, and he's going to uh, go up the stairs first, lantern and gun, and he's just like stumbling like up the stairs, like and he's probably uh, praying under his breath. He's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, Father, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. They will be done." As he's going up the stairs, okay. You're Meanwhile, praying. I've got revolver in one hand, Esther on, over my shoulder. You get like, up. Hold on, hold on, Esther. We're gonna get you out of here. Hopefully. You get upstairs. I say hopefully to myself. You see that uh, as you go back the way you came, the whole hallway has been engulfed in flames. Do I still see Albertine in front of me? Uh, Albertine, uh, you just see like flames now. The flames of the actual room have engulfed the mirage of Albertine. Um, I think Leo just steps forward. And he, t- he takes it where he thinks Albertine is standing and just starts to dance amongst the flames. <laughs> and eventually the flames engulf you as well as you stand there dancing. And somewhere in your mind, you hear the music from your, your dance that you did in No No Nanette. The two of you know that there's another way out. So Preston and Peachy, do you bust out this side door? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's just like, um, I, I, is it safe to say that the stuff he's wearing, the wetness, the water, is all of the water horrible poison? Is it's that, all acidic bile. It's all acidic bile. Okay. It's like digestive fluids. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, can I roll an intelligence roll to see if, you know, just like, if there's any precaution at all that he could take for Esther for like the smoke and stuff like that is there anything that he can do because I was thinking like you know like a, a wet rag or a wet shirt or something like that but like the the wetness is not it's acidic bile so yeah nothing on your person if you look around the kitchen there's like stuff covering some of the furniture you could grab but everything's wet and gross you feel like it might be even more dangerous you just need to get out of there and get okay. fresh air so we're just gonna run but you know I'll say hold your breath Esther hold your breath and he's going to try to hold his breath, too, and try to not breathe the smoke for as long as he can and just try to push out of there. Two of you push out through the door, and you just hear a low, rumbling growl that turns into, like, a, a guttural scream like that of a leviathan living beneath the earth. And you just... And the building's shaking, and just windows start blasting out, fires catching, things are jumping on fire. Leo's nowhere to be seen. You look over towards the warehouse and you see just yellow light bursting out of the open door. What Charlie? do you do? <laughs> Preston is still, he's just still reciting under his breath. Now he's almost, he's like closing his eyes. He's like, lo, though I walk through the shadow of death, I shall feel no darkness, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like praying and running out this thing and making sure that Peachy and, and Esther are close by. And he goes toward the light to try to bust out the door. Okay, you go towards the light in the warehouse and when you walk in, you see everything that Shirley saw, but you don't see Shirley. Give me a sanity check. Shirley! But then he's just (laughs) sees this horrific. Actually, by the time you arrive, 
I forgot, after five minutes, this happens. By the time you arrive, you walk in, you see all these things floating, you see one large thing covering up the space, and you're like, what? And then there is a enormous inhuman eye just staring directly at you with insatiable hunger. One who has seen the eye? <laughs> Give me a sanity roll. Oh, dude, we're getting there. We're get oh my God, I rolled a one. I rolled an what? actual fucking one, dude. I can't believe this shit. Joe, you found your game. This, I did <laughs> so. People have said this for years. Like, you need to play Cthulhu, bro. Got to roll All low. Right. Got to roll low. You take one point of salmon, sanity damage. Had you failed, it would have been 1d10. Wait, even on a crit, you still take one? Always fail? I'm not take 100% one? sure. Uh, I think I mean, you I'm do. So I'm fine so with it. There's no rule about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it would have been 1d10 on a loss. But you oh. make it. You just see this oh. eye looking at you. And and you're like, is that goose? Is that goose staring at me? That's a bitch. <laughs> but you're like, I, you can't comprehend this. You're, uh, you got to get out of here, or you got to walk towards it. What do you want to do? There's no, there's no way to. There's no sign of Shirley. There's no way to help Shirley. There's nothing no. that can be done. There's lights all over the room. You see switches. You might be able to turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'll try to do. Okay. He'll, he'll try to turn it off. So you pull one switch down. <laughs> pull the other one. <laughs> <laughs> The light goes out, all of the images disappear, and Shirley is nowhere to be found. <laughs> maybe, maybe she got away, Peachy. Maybe she, she wasn't Wait. in there. What are we gonna do, Shirley? The last time Shirley was running towards there, and, and, and Leo, what about Leo? I don't know. He he was supposed to follow us to get Esther, but he wanted to start that fire. Well, he did it, but I don't know where he is. We, we got to get Esther back, Peachy. We got to get her back. Maybe the other two are going to find their own way. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <sighs> well, Esther's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. We're going to get you out of here. And Let's run to, to the car. All right. She looks you over run. to Preston sorry, with yeah. like holding back tears, not knowing if she could save her friends and not liking that she's running away is going to run towards the car. Run towards the car. Roscoe's car? No, because Leo had the keys. So you have to run back to Maureen's car that you stole. <laughs> yeah. You run back to Maureen's car. You know that Leo's got the keys to Roscoe's. If he gets out, he's got a ride. It's far enough away from the house that it hopefully won't catch. So the two of you jump in Maureen's car with Esther, put her in the back seat. She's passed out. And you drive off. You drive off back towards the shanty town. What do you imagine your lives are like after experiencing this as you're driving there down this long, dark, road away from these estates. What do you imagine your life is going to be like now that you've experienced this? I just feel that there are things that we've seen that we'll never be able to describe to people and your life just gets that much lonelier because the few people that you had to hold on to there's just two more gone. And how are you ever going to have a normal conversation or how are you ever going to find any sort of happiness again when you've seen the things that you've seen? Preston. I think that his faith is reinvigorated, actually. I think that he puts it all on the devil. You know, I think that he's like, there really is this great evil and the Holy Trinity is trying to protect us from that evil. And like, he has seen it and maybe, maybe it, it even deepens even more for him. Like maybe he even moves into like, you know, uh, like, all, and, and the loss of his friends is so hard that like, he never thinks about sports again. I'll say that. Like, everything turns to, like, 
charity and like, you know, goodwill work and trying to be a, a representative of, of the, the Catholic Church, you know, in, in the most positive way possible. As you're driving back to the Hooverville, we cut to the Hooverville. A car pulls in. Doors open up. But instead of the two of you exiting the car, there are two men. One guy reaches into the back seat, pulls out a shotgun. If this was a film, you would recognize him as Alex Rossetti from earlier. The other man steps out of the passenger side and he has a white kerchief covering his face and a Panama hat. That bastard Sedgwick. They God. sneak into the shanty town, hiding behind some of the lean-tos until the man in the kerchief points to Rossetti. They bust open one of the doors quietly and Rossetti comes in and just holds a shotgun in the face of Nancy Carver. And then this man with the kerchief enters, pale skin, you can see on his arms, pudgy. He removes his white Panama hat to reveal slicked back hair covering a pockmarked forehead. He then reaches his hand across his face and removes a white silk kerchief. Covering a disfigured war wound is what people around town believe, but as the kerchief falls, you instead see purplish gray discolored skin and festering wounds covering his face. And as he moves in closer to Nancy, who is gone, she's already completely insane and she's just petrified in fear, both at the shotgun and at what she sees, because these aren't festering wounds. These are small little mouths covering his cheeks and his forehead. And you see tiny little teeth. And he takes a canister, opens it up, and with a long gloved hand, he pulls out one of those lamprey-like creatures, also covered in mouths. And at the same time, the mouths on the lamprey and the mouths on his face all begin to cry out like hungry babies. <sighs> Preston itches his back as he drives in the car. Maybe Peachy is asleep with Esther. He itches his back. And he realizes that part of his shirt has ripped away or burnt away from the acid. And right on his lower back, there's a small face beginning to form. Oh. And that's the end. Oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> if you ever want to play this scenario, it is called Bleak Prospect. No kidding. By, uh, <laughs> uh, everyone in chat, roll sanity. Yeah, everyone roll sanity. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's by Scott Dorward, and it is, like I said, I'm not even exaggerating. It's the best thing I've ever read. We've taken a bunch of liberties with it. It's gone completely off the rails and come back around again. Thank you so much for watching. We went a little late tonight, but uh, I hope it was worth it. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Becca. Thank you, Nora. Please uh, follow Thank them. You, Check Chaosium. out everything they Thank do. Thank you for the to the winners of our giveaway tonight. Thanks for watching. So awesome. Uh, try this game. It's amazing. Thank you for having us. Thanks, yes. Becca. Thanks, Thank you, Becca. Thank you. Oh, what a fun, fun group. It was so I'm good. So, I'm sweating with fear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have fun in your house tonight, Joe. Come <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> you got a face on your back. <laughs> Check the mirrors for goo. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs>